Lincoln played a wet game on the road last week and comes home to do it again. These are hardy folk, these Duck fans, and they're here in all their full-throatedness as the Stafford Cardinal comes to town. Stadium. We're on the campus of the University of Oregon here in Eugene, Oregon, where it is great weather for, well, it's great weather for ducks. Sloppy, ugly day here in Eugene. But of course, the hometown ducks hope it doesn't deter them from their appointed rounds as we welcome you to Pac-10 College Football Saturday, presented by Acura, the Stanford Cardinal. Come calling on the wet Oregon ducks. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. You, of course, know my partner, Petros Papadakis. And uh, P, going to be a ground game. There's no question about it. And Stanford right now comes in here with one of the best ground games in this conference. They run the football in a very physical way, and Toby Gerhardt is the reason. This guy is just flat out a fantastic back. He can go over 1,000 yards today. He's right at 911 right now. He is very strong through the contact zone, sheds tacklers, and he has deceptive speed. This guy's a good back, and he should get about 25 carries in this football game this afternoon. Yeah, four straight 100-yard games for Toby Gerhardt. Well, as good as Stanford is running the football, so too is Oregon. And they run the football in large part with their quarterback. Yeah, Jeremiah Masoli has really been running the ball a lot this year. He's not too comfortable in the pocket, Barry. The guy's got a very good arm, but he's had a difficult time finding receivers all year. But he's very comfortable getting outside and running the football. He's a tough kid. He's very physical. Struggled last week in the rain against Cal with two interceptions. Also had a fumble. This is another rainy game, but he can really run the ball. This is a tough kid, and I think that's why Bellotti is sticking with Masoli as the quarterback. And Stanford with an opportunity to do something they haven't done since 2001. They're going to go to a bowl game if they get a victory in one of the next three games. They're sitting right now at five victories. That is an amazing turnaround. If you knew this team in the last few years, Jim Harbaugh has absolutely changed everybody's attitude about Stanford football and the way they play. Oregon is struggling in the red zone. Stanford comes in here on a bit of a roll. They're playing very solid football. So it's the Ducks and the Cardinal here on a rainy day at Autzen Stadium in Eugene. Whoever can run the football you feel might have the best idea to come away with a victory. Two quarterbacks who throw when they have to, who run it as they want to. That's the bottom line of this game. Taking care of the football going to be another big factor. Ducks and Cardinal. After the break, we'll send you to our College Football Saturday studio in Los Angeles. Bowl eligible season since 2001 when they played in the Seattle Bowl. And we are joined, of course, by the third member of our broadcast team. We go down to the field for the first time of many today. Here's Jim Watson. Waddy. Barry, as you just mentioned, with a win today, Stanford becomes bowl eligible first time since 2001. So counting today, they have three chances to win one game. But it's not going to be easy because the schedule makers have saved the best for last for Stanford. After today, they go home to play USC, one of the best teams in the country, and then finish up across the bay against the Golden Bears in the big game. Now, Stanford beat both of those teams last year, which means besides being really good, California and USC will also have the revenge factor working for them. So that all that means that this is probably their most winnable game left on the schedule. History is against them. Oregon has won six in a row in this series, but this is not your Stanford Cardinal of your dad's age. Remember, those teams used to outscore teams by throwing the ball. Now it's a stout defense and a punishing run game. So they're going to play on a full field today, but maybe Stanford's full hopes and their season will be decided in that thin ribbon of space between the offensive and defensive lines. When you talk about the weather, you think that rain would be an advantage for Oregon. Both teams played in the weather. Heavy rains in the Bay Area last week. Oregon lost to Cal. They stumbled through a bad game. Meanwhile, Stanford, who never plays in the rain, rolled up 344 yards and 58 points against Washington State in a rout. Well, here in the Willamette Valley, they have attitude about rain. Just moments ago, 50,000 people stood as one voice and yelled, it never rains at Austin Stadium. Really? Really? It never rains here? One other thing, no umbrellas. Look at the crowd. You won't see one umbrella here. I walked out of the tunnel with an umbrella about 90 minutes ago. One guy looked at me and he said, hey, Watson, 
it's only water. Man up and lose the umbrella. <laughs> Where's the love, man? <laughs> no, it's absolutely true. I mean, they don't think of this as rain. And in fact, I think of it as rain. Oh, it's definitely rain. Oh, I was, it's I was, rain. I was six through and I walked in here. I'm down to five nine. <laughs> what is it? I don't understand. If it's not rain, what's happening here at Autzen Stadium? It is a wet day, and Jeremiah Masoli, as we talked about, had a lot of trouble with the wet ball at California. This is going to be a tough test for him. Yeah, you know, the other thing we have not talked about, both these teams, they have very good special teams, but at the moment, Oregon special teams are struggling a little bit. Stanford at the very top of its game. Well, that's why Stanford is winning this year, because they have a good running game, a playmaking, hard-playing defense, and they're solid in their special team. That's a mark of a well-coached football team. Oregon won to toss, they deferred. Stanford will get the ball first. Chris Arusu is going to be the deep man for the Stanford Cardinals. A shorted kind of kick. Arusu handles at the eight-yard line. Right back up the gut, lost the football. It's picked up by the Ducks and knocked out of bounds at about the 18-yard line was the kicker, Matt Evenson. So right out of the box, the weather plays a part. And we should also point out that Arusu is not the guy who's normally back there for the Stanford Cardinal. It is usually Jonathan Stewart. He was not available today. And so they went with Arusu and he coughed it up on the opening kickoff and Oregon will have it at the 19. Well, there's Arusu, just a freshman, and that ball goes flying out of there. Johnny on the spot, Evenson, the kicker, there to snatch it and run out of bounds. That's a big play for him. He's been struggling kicking the football. So a huge break to start the game here. And this is Masoli on the keep. And he'll get it down about the 19-yard line. Shike Amajoy in the center makes the stop. Oregon has not been real effective in the red zone of late. Nine touchdowns in their last 15 red zone attempts. Here's the numbers on Jeremiah Masoli. Does have a strong arm. Still working on his decision making a little bit, especially in the red zone. So it's going to be second down and five and a fumble picked up by Masoli. Masoli looks for the end zone. Now he pulls it down and throws it away intended for Mayo. Bo McNally defending. The Oregon offensive line presented by Acura. It is strong. Jeremiah Johnson will alternate with LeGarrette Blunt. Jeremiah Masoli will get the start at quarterback. Justin Roper is available should he be needed. He did play a little bit down in Berkeley against California last week. Third down, five. Play fake. Masoli pulls it down. Now he throws and throws it out of bounds. Well covered that time by Chris Evans. And Evans is a guy they do want to test. Well, he's got 58 tackles on the season, does Chris Evans, the cornerback for Stanford, because they're throwing at him a lot, and Masoli trying to pick on Evans. Part of the problem with Masoli in his passing is that he likes to scramble so much that he moves the pocket around, and the windows that are normally open with open receivers are starting to close. He's just not on the same page right now with Chip Kelly, the offensive coordinator. So a 37-yard field goal attempt by a guy who's not tried one this year, Morgan Flint, a change for Mike Bellotti, and he drives it through. Real confidence builder for Morgan Flint. Evenson had been doing all the kicking. We asked Bellotti yesterday, uh, is there something wrong? He said, yeah, missed kicks. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Ducks really do jump out quickly. Through nine games, they've outscored opponents 91 to 25 in the first quarter. On average, that means they lead better than 10 to three at the end of every first quarter. And even more magnified when you factor in that Purdue actually led the Ducks 14 to three the first quarter one, back in week three of the season. So this is a Duck team that does score early. The problem is they've been wearing out of late, but Stanford has the same problem, especially with their defense, because they don't play a lot of guys. They leave the guys out there and hope that they can stay fresh throughout the game. That's been a problem for Jim Harbaugh's squad. Well, Chris is gonna go back and try this again. I think the Stanford defense especially would take that start considering that they gave up great field position starting at their own 23-yard line and allowing just the three points. So 3 nothing ball game. We're not even a minute into the game yet. And now Evenson will kick it away once more. And Arusu will be the deep man. Howell, the short man. This one's driven by Evenson, about five yards deep, and Arusu will not come out with this. So Stanford will start at the 20-yard line. 
So Tavita Pritchard will uh, take the helm of the Cardinal. Pritchard, the junior quarterback out of Tacoma. Completing a reasonably good percentage of his passes, but he throws only when necessary. He's not a guy who's going to beat you with his arm necessarily, but he does manage the game. Well, there's no question that Stanford and Jim Harbaugh have developed a superior ground game with Gerhardt and Kimball. Today, Tavita Pritchard needs consistency more than anything else. He can't suffer through another 51-yard performance like he had in the last road game, a loss at UCLA. They line up with Gerhardt and Howell in the backfield. Howell now splits to the near side and a quick pass to Howell. Howell shakes the first man and we'll get it to about the 25, a pickup of five on the quick pass to Howell. They like to get him in space. Offensively for the Cardinal, presented by Acura, Alex Fletcher, the absolute anchor at the center position. We talked about Toby Gerhardt. Josh Catron gets the start at fullback ahead of Marisic, who is available, but we don't expect to see him a whole lot. Marisic has been a real coach favorite, one of the favorites of Jim Harbaugh, and a tremendous blocker. So we'll see Catron stepping into that role. Pritchard throws again for Gerhardt. Gerhardt's cracked at the line of scrimmage. Defensively, for the Oregon Ducks, here's where they will come to the dance. And Nick Reed, of course, very active on the edge. Oregon, very good sideline to sideline. Spencer Pacinger now playing healthy, and he can really stick it. And the secondary, of course, all those big names, and T.J. Ward, is the guy that the coaching staff says played better than anybody else. He's making a lot of very physical tackles, and they've moved him up toward the line of scrimmage because of that. This guy's the best tackler on the team in their leading tackle. Third down and five. And here's the pitch this time as Lucas comes into the ball game. They try to run the option. Nothing doing. As T Tukuafu, Will Tukuafu was right there and never let Lucas have a chance at the pitch. Well, because Tavita Pritchard has been so pedestrian this year, throwing and running the football, Jim Harbaugh likes to bring Alex Lukas, the big Greek, the giant Greek, to run the ball at quarterback, and that time they brought him in to run the option, it didn't work. This time it's gonna be Bird receiving the punt, steps up through a couple of tackles, another missed tackle, and Bird's gonna get it all the way to midfield, a good return, and some sloppy tackling by the Cardinal. 41-yard punt, 12-yard return, Oregon has it, leading three to nothing. and online at freecreditreport.com and by Best Buy you happier Oregon will start right at midfield Jeremiah Masoli the quarterback Jeremiah Johnson the running back Masoli straight back throws a little bubble screen this time and it is caught it's going to be a big game for Drew Davis down the sideline the 15 the 10 he will go into the end zone let's see out of bounds they're going to say out of bounds the five yard line well, Stanford's defense crept up, and Chip Kelly, offensive coordinator, catches him with kind of an inside screen. Great blocking on the edge by the Oregon Ducks, and Drew Davis getting his first start today for Jason Williams, who is almost a record-setting receiver here at Oregon, but has dropped a lot of balls. Drew Davis comes in, catches and runs with a masterful intensity, taking it down the field very fast, shows a lot of speed, great play. First and goal, and here's Masoli to the short side, throws to the end zone, caught, touchdown! Jeff Mayo on the reception, and Oregon jumping on Stanford early. Well, Jeremiah Masoli started just as slow today as he finished last week's sloppy 7 for 21 performance at Cal, but then steps it up after the punt with two big completions, short passes, as they were, he gets Drew Davis for the big game, and this time, on a designed pocket moving, gets the ball to Jeff Mayle, who's really the inside slot guy. He's also been plagued by drop balls. Great confidence builder for the Oregon offense early in this football game. Absolutely. The 45-yard pass to Davis, the big play of the drive, and then a five-yard scoring pass from Mazzoli to Mayle, and a try for point by Flint is up and good, and with 11.36 left in the first quarter, Oregon on top by 10. In a game they should have won against UCLA on the road in their last road game, here they are in a much tougher place to play, Oxen Stadium, 
And it looks right now like it's getting on top of them a bit. Very important possession upcoming here for the Cardinals. They've only had three offensive snaps and they trail by 10. That's going to go out of bounds, so the Cardinal will get good field position at the 40 yard line. Right now, let's take you to our studios, get a game break once more with Mike Goldberg. Mike. All right, we got to talk about the big three now. We'll start with number three, Penn State at Iowa. First possession, it's the Hawkeyes, Sean Green. Two plays, six points, 14 yards on the score. Iowa winning against number three, Penn State, seven to nothing. Number one, Alabama took advantage of an LSU turnover. John Parker Wilson took it into the end zone. They lead seven to nothing. Texas Tech, of course, has a big one later today. All right, thanks a lot, Goldie. Two very important games. I'm sure Mike Goldberg and Barco Farr will keep us posted as we go along here. We're just underway with Oregon leading 10 to nothing. Tampa at the 40-yard line. And to give the Gerhardt nothing doing, might have gotten two. All right, P, let's look at the Stanford scouting report brought to you by Days In. Well, they got to continue to run the football, especially right now. This is not a Stanford team that is built to come from behind. They did come from behind against Arizona earlier in the season, but they can't get down much more than this, and they have to remain blue-collar. Continue to run, remain blue-collar. Basically the same thing. they got to be themselves. Run the football, be physical, take some air out of the ball. This time out of the gun. And Pritchett to give to Gerhardt gets a little opening and drives forward close to a first down. And he really brings it. All right, let's look at the days in scouting report. Well, they've already started with that with that fast start. The way these guys get out and the speed really just shocks Stanford, especially on the inside screen to Drew Davis. And they need to force to beat a Pritchard to beat him. They want him dropping back and throwing the football as much as possible, especially seven-step drops. Really trying to get down the field so Nick Reed can make some quarterback sacks. Alex Lucas is back at quarterback now. They're on the option a lot with him. Lucas pitched to Gerhardt. Gerhardt, nowhere to go. Stood straight up. as coming up right through the gap was Casey Matthews. And a big loss on the play of six. As this game develops, you start to realize that Stanford is really going to have to bring their lunch pail if they run and run the ball in Autzen Stadium because Oregon is always great at stacking the box, especially here at Autzen Stadium. Very active linebackers, very active safety. A lot of guys that can make a lot of tackles. And we talked to both uh, Jim Harbaugh and to Toby Gerhardt yesterday, and they both told us everybody's been stacking the box. We still feel we can run. Well, so far, not with great results. Pitcher this time play fake in trouble. Has to unload, does wide open this time. Is Delano Howell, and Howell will get within about three yards of the first down. So well, that, well, that, well executed. That play should have gone for more, Barry. Delano Howell was open about six steps before Tavita Pritchard found him. Pritchard did a good job adjusting to the pressure, but that ball was there, and then Delano Howell makes the catch and stumbles a little bit. He's got to turn and run, but you see in his anxiousness to get that first down, he stumbles a little bit. If they don't get the first down on this play, it's Tavita Pritchard's fault for not making that throw earlier. T.J. Ward with the tackle. Lucas back at quarterback here on third down and three, a big play. And they keep this time by Lucas, not going to get there. Second effort will get close. I, unless he gets a generous spot, I'm not sure. Patrick Chung stopped him, but a good job by Lucas, who at 6'4", 226, is a bit of a load himself. And he does get a favorable spot. First down, Stanford, all second effort by Lucas. The great, Big Greek. Great play by the Big Greek there. Lucas, Deerfield High School in Illinois, Bannockburn, Illinois, not afraid to take on one of the better tacklers in the Pac-10, one of the best tacklers in the history of Oregon football, Patrick Chung, and Lucas wins that battle. Now they go empty backfield. Pritchard back at quarterback. Pritchard takes a deep drop. He's in trouble. He's hit as he throws. What a catch made by Whalen and a first down at the 25-yard line. That could have been a disaster instead of big first down. Casey Matthews right in Pritchard's grill. As the sun peeks through at Austin Stadium, it is starting to shine on the Cardinal here. 
big hit on Tavita Pritchard, but he stands in and makes an incredible throw and an even better catch by the walk-on, former walk-on Ryan Whalen, who just does what he's asked, the leading receiver on the team. That's one of the best catches we've seen all year. I'm telling you, that's a highlight film catch. Now it's Anthony Kimball at tailback, and we're gonna get a stoppage here in a timeout. Gonna be called by the Stanford Cardinal. So eight minutes and 24 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Oregon jumped on the Cardinal quickly, but a couple of big conversions by Stanford on this drive. There you go. Someday we'll find it, Barry. The rainbow connection. It's there. I know. The lovers, the dreamers, and us. <laughs> In this marketplace, that pot of gold would be a good thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> Anything would be a good thing. Yeah, that's right. I haven't seen any of these I, rain slickers I, come off in Austin Stadium. I think I think that pot of gold just has chips in it or something. I don't think it has real money. Let's Chocolate. get out of the sideline right now once more. Jim Watson, Waddy, what do you got? Well, Barry, we knew Stanford would rotate their quarterbacks, and sometimes they actually tip their hand at that quarterback position. Pritchard, of course, more of the dropback guy. can slide, move a little bit. So when he's in, they're more likely to throw. But Lucas, as you've seen, much bigger and stronger. He's the running quarterback just during that first down. And they also like to get him on the edge so they have that run-pass option. Oregon came in ready for both, but they expect Lucas to get more snaps by the time we're done. Yeah, he's been in there actually more than I expected we would see him so far. Richard, a quarterback now at the 25-yard line, first down, Cardinal. Lucy comes in motion to give us the Kimball, not to do it. Spencer Pacinger in the Stanford backfield almost before the handoff. Well, Spencer Pacinger has really stepped up and made a lot of plays. Mike Bellotti not necessarily enamored with his linebacker's ability to tackle over the last couple seasons, but that's changed a lot with Spencer Pacinger at a Beverly Hills High, 902-10 in Los Angeles, California. You see him on the Will Backer run through, gets his hands on Kimball, who is a little bit faster than Toby Gerhardt, makes a great play. Second down and 12. Pitch to Gerhardt. Oh, yes, it is Gerhardt. Gerhardt not going to get much, so get back. Close to the original line of scrimmage. Pacinger again right there. And it's going to be third down, a long 10. And again, we see the speed of Pacinger at the Beverly Hills High School. Norman, I'm not sure if the edge is really where the Stanford Cardinal wants to attack this Oregon defense. Looks like in their game plan, they want to get out there on the edge. And Gerhardt's really going to put his foot in the ground and try to take it upfield every time. He's never going to try to take it to the sideline. And this Oregon defense so far in the game, a little bit too fast to let that happen. So third down and 10. Ball just outside the 25-yard line. Actually closer to 11 yards that they need. And they're gonna run it with Kimball, and Kimball slips the first man, but not the second of the stop well short of the first down at about the 21-yard line. So that will bring about the presence of Aaron Zagary. Zachary has had kind of a renaissance season. He really struggled the last couple of years. Pack was replaced last year as the place kicker, and now has had a very successful year. Six of six inside the 40-yard line. He'll hit this one at the 29, so a 39-yard effort. And he drives this pretty good, and... It is good. So Stanford on the board, 6-17 remaining first quarter, 10-3, Oregon. Caller attitude is paying off for the Cardinal as they seem to have weathered the early onslaught by the Ducks. But a blue shirt at Stanford? But it's, it's, it's blue collar, oh, man. It's are. not like a cow oh, shirt. It's, you know, it's like a denim thing. The Canadian tuxedo, jeans and a denim shirt. Well, we talk about how good the special teams were. So far, we've had a fumble on special teams and two kicks out of bounds. So, <laughs> they'll start at the 40-yard line. Here's the Stanford defense presented by Acura. They will rotate eight different players on that down line. I'm a joy, just a sophomore anchoring in the middle there. And Bo McNally, a guy everybody talks about, plays with his hair on fire, just gets after people. <laughs> you know, I don't think that would be safe. I think it's, you know, it's just a metaphor. It is a metaphor. They've really turned up the pressure to this Cardinal defense. They registered 23 sacks over the last six games, but Masoli's going to be a hard guy to get to. 
Starting at the 40-yard line, so again, good field position. Here's that screen, and beginning to run before he got it was Flugard. Let's go to the studio right now for a game break. Here's Mike Goldberg. Mike? Barry, we told you a moment ago, Alabama scored first, number one Alabama at number 16 LSU. Tigers have tied it up. Jarrett lead Demetrius Bird at 7-7. Now this is, of course, the return of Nick Saban. And Bama coughed up the kickoff, and LSU's on the attack again. They have just scored. It's 13-7. Uh, just like that, a lot of scoring there. Jeremiah Johnson gets the carry on first down. He's stopped by Eric Lorig after a pickup of four, on second down rather, so it'll be third down and six. Cardinal defense needs to get on and off the field right now and send a message early in this game that they will not keep giving up yards and points. Straight back again and another screen, and this time a little room is Johnson, and first man misses him, and Johnson gets the first down across midfield, exactly what the Ducks needed. Masafilo got a hand on him, but could not bring down Jeremiah Johnson. Masafilo with a great opportunity to get his defense off the field. If a defensive lineman gets his hands on a guy like Jeremiah Johnson, who's under 200 pounds, that play is probably going to be over. But Johnson, great job of breaking the tackle and getting the first down. That's what he does for these ducks. At the 49-yard line, Masoli gives it Johnson again. Johnson gets ahead across the 45, down to about the 43-yard line. Well, the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com at home. With the O. Absolutely. Second down. And five. It's only going to throw. Has all day. Just whistles it right by the ear of his intended receiver. Jeremiah Masoli just not comfortable sitting back in that pocket. There's no question that he looks uncomfortable, that he likes to be on the move, he likes to run the ball, he wants to get hit, he's a tough kid. He just has a hard time sitting back there and throwing the football, even though he's got a good arm. Well, he's going to do it again here. Now he runs to his right, and he is in trouble. Gets away from one, gets away from two, and gets it ahead. Close to a first down, but he will be about a yard and a half short. And now Mike Pilate's got a decision to make. Pat Maynard makes the stop for the Cardinal. Crowd, of course, urging the Ducks to go, and I suspect they will here. That is Justin Roper, the backup quarterback, signaling the play in. Morgan, of course, goes without a huddle, and they will change tempo as the game goes along. Fourth down and about a yard and a half. Give to Johnson. First down and more. 35-30 to the 20, to the 15, still on his feet at the 10, the 5, taking people with it. Touchdown, Oregon. What a run by Jeremiah Johnson. 40 yards. Dragging the Stanford corner will pommel Osaisai the whole way. And this is an early big-time run in a football game for Jeremiah Johnson, a guy that has split some time this year with LeGarrette Blunt, but he really wants to be the featured back, really wants to be known as the featured back, wants to carry the load, takes it all the way into the end zone with those side side, broke a lot of tackles, about five on that run. Great run by Johnson. Try for point once again is up and also good, and Oregon leads it 17-3. Here is Owusu at the 10-yard line to the 20. A little gap to the 30, 35, to the 40, 45, and gets close to midfield. A big return by Chris Owusu of 40 yards. Boy, it's been a game of big plays. Owusu had a gap like that earlier in the game when he fumbled on the very first kickoff of the game that he could have maybe taken all the way. That time, a similar gap opens up on the other side of the field, takes advantage of it, and the kicker who recovered the fumble on the first play of the game, Matt Evenson, comes up with the tackle this time. They took him away from the field goal duties, but he's making a lot of plays on the kickoff. Yeah, he is. So Pritchard will go out of the gun on first down. Incidentally, Toby Gerhardt was taken to the locker room after the last series, so Kimball is the running back. Pritchard with time, throws it out this time, that is caught by Catron, and 
Catron, a good receiver, will get it for a gain of nine. Let's go to the sideline. Jim Watson might have an update on Toby Gerhardt. Waddy? Yeah, Barry, as you mentioned, Gerhardt not only not in the game, he did leave the field, and he's had a lot of injuries this year, and you can add another one to it. It is a groin. It happened the last time he carried the ball. When he jumped up, he was shaking that right leg out a little bit, and then he asked to come out of the game. They worked on him a little bit. He ran up and down the sideline. He's had a shoulder. He's had a knee, and now this. And, in fact, in practice, he wears a yellow jersey because he is not to be touched. So we'll keep a close eye on him. Cardinal need him, no question. Here's Kimball. Kimball gets a little gap and will pick up about six, maybe seven. And that'll be a first down for Stanford. Spencer Pacinger again the stop, but that's what Stanford is looking to do more of. Anthony Kimball's a good back, and if they have to go with him for the rest of the game, he certainly knows how to carry the load. The senior at a Bethel Rouge, Louisiana University High School. He's been a good back for Stanford throughout his career. He's seen some dark days at the University of Stanford, and things are looking up these days, but they need Toby Gerhardt if they want to get back into this football game. He's a physical runner, and you get hit a lot and hurt a lot when you run like he does. So a first down is short of the 33-yard line. Here's Kimball again, not this time. Lost about two, maybe three yards on the play. Great pursuit by Oregon. They're doing a great job, Rashawn Harris, that time, getting involved. Also, Spencer Pacinger is playing a very good first quarter. It's going to be very difficult for the Stanford Cardinal if they're not going to be able to get positive yards in the run game on first down. When they lose yardage on first down and end up with a second and 15, second and 14, which is what they're looking at right now, it really limits the play calling abilities. Tavita Pritchard is not a down the field thrower. We saw him pull off a miracle pass for a first down to Ryan Whalen. Don't expect a lot of that in this football game for Pritchard. So second down and 13. Pritchard drops, throws, threw it wide, and taking a real pop was Doug Baldwin. And it was T.J. Ward who popped him. T.J. incidentally wearing the number 29. A different Duck player wears that every game in honor of Todd Doxey, who, of course, was tragically, died tragically in a, uh, an accident in the Willamette River earlier this year. So in honor of him, a different player will wear his number 29 in every game. And Ward punishing, I mean, absolutely punishing Doug Baldwin on that play. And that's on Tavita Pritchard for hanging his receiver up. Third down. Four-man rush. Pritchard steps up. He'll run. Got room. Down to the 30, 25, and the 20. And dives down to the 19-yard line with a Stanford first down. Patrick Chung makes the tackle, but a gain of 18 for Pritchard. Richard has one touchdown running the ball this year. He is a average to good scrambler. Not as good as Lucas, obviously. But Tavita Pritchard doing a great job of getting down just in time, exposing his back to Patrick Chung, who's another big hitter roaming that duck secondary. So the Cardinal at the 19-yard line with a first down. Out of the gun this time. Pritchard give to Kimball. Kimball's got a little room. 15 and stopped at the 10-yard line. Might have had more than that. But good first down yardage. It'll be second and very short for Stanford. Stanford's been very effective in the red zone this year. They have scored 29 of the 31 times they've been there. That's number three in the nation. Nice zone cut by Kimball. Kind of got his momentum stopped by one of his wide receivers. And Patrick Chung, who's a very good tackler in space, brings him down. But second and short, really nice position for the Cardinal to be in. Well, they flopped the lineman an unbalanced line and it's Kimball running behind it goes the other way and will have the first down I believe well it's going to depend on the spot too looked like he made it well no matter what happened there it was a nice read by Kimball <laughs> Gerhardt would have just taken it and tried to push the pile and most likely got the first down Casey Matthews makes a the tackle there but Kimball recognized that the hole on the right side was clogged up and just veered it back to the left, found a little bit of space to creep in there and get some positive yardage. They're going to measure. They bring the chains out. Ball marked right about the nine-yard line. And this is going to be just that short. And they're going to say it's first down. Looked like it might have been a bit short, but first down Cardinal. 
They'll take it. This is a great job by the Cardinal, just inching their way down the field, now threatening in the red zone without their offensive star, Toby Gerhardt. Keeping that Oregon offense, that quick hitting Oregon offense off the field and resting their defense on the sideline. They bring Howell up on a wing this time. Kimball is the setback. And Pritchard rolls to his right, throws underneath this time to Howell. Howell will get to about the four yard line. Now they're gonna mark him out about short of five. You get a generous spot there, T.J. Ward runs him out. Can't say enough about T.J. Ward, the coaching staff feeling that he is the most valuable player. And as I looked out, Toby Gearhart running back on the playing surface now, not on, into the lineup quite yet, but he seems to be running without a lot of pain right at the moment. Now they might miss him right now in the red zone if they don't throw him back into the football game. 13 touchdowns on the year for Gerhart. He got taken out of the Washington game earlier in the season with a concussion. Second down now and goal. And Kimball again, and not much there. Kimball maybe gets to the four yard line. And again, it's Spencer Pacinger, the first man to it. And in that University of Washington game, after a couple carries for Gerhart, they had to hide his helmet with the concussion because he wanted to get back in the game so badly. We come to the end of the first quarter. That's the kind of player that Toby Gerhardt is. Big quarter for the Oregon Ducks. They lead Stanford 17 to three. Cardinal will be driving and right at the five yard line when the second quarter begins. After these commercial messages, we're coming back to Hudson Stadium. We have prepared to start the second quarter here on Pac-10 College Football Saturday. It's been all Oregon so far. They lead it 17 to three. Cardinal with an opportunity. Third down and goal. They're at the five yard line. Kimball remains the running back. Pritchard to throw. Looks to the end zone. Has a man. Touchdown Cardinal to Josh Catron. <laughs> Nice play, very relaxed to Vita Pritchard, sending that ball out to the flat. The flat has been open for the Cardinal throughout the first quarter. Here in the first play of the second quarter, no Toby Gerhardt on the field. And Pritchard throws a very catchable ball to the fullback, Catron, a junior out of Torrance, California. That's his fourth reception of the year and his second touchdown. A lot of special teams tackles. He's a very active player for Jim Harbaugh, and he has a lot of those. Playing in place of Marisic, the try for point, is up and good, and Stanford getting itself right back into the fray here, just three seconds into the second quarter. Let's take a moment to recognize our Pac-10 Conference Players of the Week presented by U.S. Bank. Jack Quiz Rogers, 133 rushing yards against ASU. Zach Follett of California, tremendous linebacker. And David Beeler, the kicker from Southern California, booming his kickoffs. He's got a big leg. I tell you what, Mike Bellotti really wanted T.J. Ward considered for the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week in a loss to Cal. Instead, it goes to Follett from the same game on the Cal defense. T.J. Ward, as we've been talking about, has just been out of control on the defensive side for the University of Oregon. Two forced fumbles in that football game versus Cal, but the offense just didn't pick it up. We're going to see the Oregon offense again, see if they can answer that Stanford touchdown. Yeah, see if Stanford can stop him. To beat Pritchard so far today, 7 of 8, 51 yards. We've been talking about how he's not going to beat you with his arm, but so far today is keeping Stanford in it with his arm. Oh, he's played a very good game. You like to call these type of guys mechanics. To beat a Pritchard, other than that, out of this world performance against USC, where he didn't have great numbers, but just what heart and soul to go down to the Coliseum and win for Jim Harbaugh in that game last year. To beat a Pritchard since that game has become much more of a mechanic, much more of a game manager, and Stanford has really developed a great run game. Zachary, short kickoff this time going to be Thurman at the 11-yard line. Thurman looking for a gap. Now he skips into one, gets the outside, a flag is down, 30-35, tries to cut it back, gets by a man, and lost the football, and let's see who's got it. Stanford saying they do, they do. Thurman just had the ball stripped while he was fighting for more yardage. There is a flag down on the play, but I'm quite sure that this will be an illegal block against Oregon, and Stanford will get its first break of the ball game. And it seemed to be... There is no foul on the play. Ball was recovered by Stanford. Thaddeus Chase down. for the Cardinal who recovered the ball. So no flag. Cardinal has it first down. Well, Walter Thurman the third 
who is a very good cornerback fighting for extra yards in this situation. He's been bothered by a groin all year. Howell knocked the ball out of his hands, Pete. Delano Howell steps up. He's been active on the offensive end, pursuing Thurman, and Thurman able to stay on his feet, fighting for extra yards, and Howell gets the last laugh by snatching the ball away at the very end. Great special team play by the Cardinal. Cardinal has it at the 40-yard line. Chance to tie the football game with a touchdown. Here's going to be a halfback pass, and now Kimball's going to run with it, and he gets a little something out of nothing. The man was covered downfield. Kimball wanted to get the ball to Ryan Whalen, but wisely tucked it in, made a very good spin move. Kimball's got almost as good a move as Jeremiah Johnson. Ultimately coming up to make the stop is Jerome Boyd. Kimball, fifth-year senior. He's seems always to have been playing hurt. He is healthy so far this year, and it's showing. And Gerhardt's still warming up on the sideline. Second out of nine after all of that. This time Pritchard to throw, five-step drop, clear out this time for Kimball. Kimball to the 30, Kimball about the 26, first down Cardinal, pace it remains the tackle. I'll tell you what, Barry, before the game, I would have never suggested a shootout, but Stanford might not have a choice today with the way this game is shaping up in the first half. Completely different, and it's been the passing, not the running. And you see Tavita Pritchard finding the outlet route. Kimball turns around, does a good job of not backing into the route, just turns around, Shows the quarterback his numbers, catches the ball first, and then goes and gets the first down. That is senior play from a very experienced running back. Eight of nine, 63 yards for Pritchard. There's Kimball, and Kimball with a gap. Gets to the 20, gets to about the 16-yard line, close to another first down. Walter Thurman makes the tackle for Oregon, and Kimball will be very close to another Stanford first down. Well, whenever you have a running back that performs as well as Toby Gerhardt does, and you have a strong backup, an experienced guy that can also run the football, this is just a very simple isolation play. Nice block by Catron. Kimball does a good job getting behind him, but you really have to give a great deal of credit to this Stanford offensive line and the way they block people up in these almost archaic run plays that Jim Harbaugh likes to throw out there. I love to watch him run, and there you see Toby Gerhardt still trying to figure out and loosen up that groin on the sideline. They're going to measure this and another Stanford first down right at the 17 yard line. The well, Cardinal able to do a little business right up the middle. And these are plays that most people know how to defense. That's why college football and professional football in the early 90s started to go to zone running a much more creative way of running the football for the running back as opposed to getting off double teams because linebackers were just reading too much. But Stanford seems to run power, isolation, all these old run plays very well, and Harbaugh's not afraid to pull the trigger on. Delano Howell is now the running back. And this is Howell, skips into the hole, gets it down about the 15. Pickup of about two. John Bacon, middle backer for Oregon, on the tackle. Well, we just saw Delano Hal force that fumble on the kickoff. His brother Dan, we've seen a whole bunch. He was a top linebacker at the University of Washington from 04 all the way through 07. Young man at a New Hall, California, Hart High School, which is a football powerhouse down there in Southern California. Just a really good running back, catches the ball, tackles, does everything that a Jim Harbaugh type of guy does out there on the football field. Very active players, they got a lot of them. That Harbaugh told him, don't let me overcoach you, just do what you do. There's a give to Kimball. Kimball bounces it outside, he's got a little room and he's cracked. As he gets inside the 10-yard line to about the 8, it's going to be third and one. Walter Thurman made what was a saving tackle. Check out Anthony Kimball's feet on this one, Barry. Watch him just jerk his whole body and his feet all the way to the side to find the open space and gets it up almost to the first down. Great run by Kimball. Great vision. Third down and short, and Kimball, I don't know, going to be very close. It will depend on the spot where they're looking at it. I think it's going to be short. And it is. That's why they missed Toby Gerhardt. There's no question about it. A guy that can push the pile. Kimball's given his best effort to push the pile. Takes the ball where it's supposed to go. Sees a bit of a soft spot in that defense. But Rashawn Harris got his arms around his waist and 
And that's all she wrote when a big guy like that gets a hold of a guy like Anthony Kimball. And they're going to kick this. They're not going to go for it on fourth down less than a yard. So Zagary comes on to try a 25-yard field goal. It's a fake. And this is going to be a Stanford touchdown on the move with the ball was Bo McNally, the holder, and he takes it in for the score. And there was something inside me that said this is coming. Well, that makes one of us, Barry. <laughs> I just thought it was going to be another field goal. But Stanford shocking everybody here in Autzen Stadium. People crying on their rain slickers. Still wet, even though the rain has stopped. Watching this happen here in Eugene, Oregon. Bo McNally, really one of the best football players on the Stanford team. Boy, that was well blocked, too. A giant hole. You know, we talked about Stanford special teams. They've been winning games or at least keeping them close. Mark of a well-coached team. There's no question about it. And Zagary's try for point is up and good. And how do you like it? We are tied at 17. Just getting started the second quarter. 11.08 remaining, and we're coming back. minutes and 23 seconds for the Cardinal three minutes and 29 seconds for Oregon and that means so much for the fourth quarter of this game because Stanford is not deep defensively and they've been wearing out in fourth quarters throughout the season those guys have had a long rest here in the first half watching their offense run the ball Stanford takes advantage of a fumble on a kickoff as did Oregon to start the game Thurman at the six yard line the 15 20 and cracked as he crosses the 20 yard line by Bo McNally, the man who scored the touchdown for the Cardinal. Here's another look. Well, here is my best Vince Lombardi impression. You're going to get a seal here and a seal here, Barry. And it's very, very easy to draw up and very, very easy to look at. That's a gaping hole. Oregon was not expecting it. All the Stanford offensive linemen on the kick team had to do was turn their hips around, and there's a huge hole for Bo McNally to run right through, and then he goes down and makes a tackle on the kickoff. Oregon the other way. Masoli, quick toss this time, and nothing doing. Great tackle in the backfield that time by Clinton Snyder. And it was Chris Harper who caught the ball. Clinton Snyder of the giant neck roll. Gotta have that. Oh, it's an awesome look for a linebacker. Clinton Snyder, giant in that USC game, that huge upset last year. Young man out of San Diego, California. Still a great playmaker on Jim Harbaugh's defense. Second and 10, and here's LeGarrette Blunt getting the call, and he'll get about three. <laughs> Gotta be stopped right about the 28-yard line by Matthew Masafilo. Cardinal will alternate its down linemen to him coming off now. Well, that's what Mike Bellotti has hoped to do in this game with the pace that Oregon runs, which is a definite breakneck speed, very difficult to defend, hard for Stanford to get their packages and all their blitz guys in and out of the game. Third and seven now from Masoli, throws a slant. The ball is caught this time, and it's going to be very close to a first down, Drew Davis, and I think he's got it. So Davis with a couple of receptions, had a 40-yarder, which set up the first touchdown. Second touchdown, I beg your pardon, for the Oregon Ducks. And they really are trying to test Chris Evans at the corner for the Stanford Cardinal. Well, he gets picked on a lot. That's the reason he has so many tackles. He's a junior at a Monroe, Michigan, but definitely the weaker of the two corners for the Cardinal. And to give this time to Blunt again, and Blunt will get very good yardage. He'll pick up about eight up to the 43-yard line. This is a quick-hitting duck offense. There's no question about it. Some of the stuff that Chip Kelly, the offensive coordinator, is able to pull off is just mind-boggling to me, the way they play with their pace, even with inexperienced quarterbacks, getting guys in and out of the game, calling plays at the line of scrimmage. But this would be a good time for Oregon to try to grind it out a little bit. Second down, a long two, and give this time on a reverse to Scott. Scott's got some room. Midfield 45 and out of bounds at about the 42-yard line of Stanford. They give you a lot of different looks. They absolutely do. That Mainer ran him out. But a gain of 14. Well, you see Scott coming on the end around. Bo McNally came flying up, and it would have been a spectacular tackle, but Terrence Scott just too nifty with his feet to let McNally make that play. Nice straight arm. McNally ends up with a face full of the rubber on the field turf, and Scott gets down the field for the first down. 
First down at the 43-yard line. Here's a give this time to Blunt once again. And Blunt is going to be stopped to 40, and a flag comes in. Have not had a lot of penalties in this game, but this one's going to be a hold against the Oregon Ducks. First penalty penalty that we've had from scrimmage in this Holding. ball game. Number 57 on the offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. Well, that's on Fanuki Tupo. One of the problems with this spread offense is there's so much space out on the field that a lot of these offensive linemen are unable to get away with stuff they're usually able to get away with because the officials can see it. There you see number 57, Tupo, kind of the headlock yeah. <laughs> look. That's, that's always going to get called on Tom Geiser. This time, Masoli pulls it out of the, uh, Blunt's stomach and throws it short. And it draws a couple of boos from the crowd intended for Malachi Lewis. And Mike Bellotti told us if Masoli struggles like he did last week against Cal, and he's kind of been 50-50 in this football game, he will not hesitate to pull Masoli and put in Justin Roper, who started the first game of the season versus Washington, got hurt versus Purdue, but also got hurt in that Washington game. Roper's been very inconsistent. Now they have Harper as a tailback. Here's Masoli. There's the pitch to Harper. He juggles it, and he's cracked. Ball winds up out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. That play didn't have a chance right from the get-go. Osai Sai and Snyder make sure that Harper wasn't going anywhere, but he juggled the pitch. Gosh, I really love that neck roll. <laughs> just reminds me of my old neck roll my freshman year in high school, but I just had these little skinny arms coming out. You know, the giant shoulder pads, little <laughs> skinny arms. Snyder's got some big arm. Third down a bunch. Masoli straight back in trouble, steps up. And he is, gets out of one tackle, but he's not going to get out of the next one. And the man who finally stopped him was Taylor Scoffle. Well, there you see the toughness of Jeremiah Masoli, but the crowd just does not like it. Stanford forcing their first punt of the football game. Nice stand by the defense. A lot of help with the holding penalty on Tupo. They look happy. <laughs> Doug Baldwin going to be the deep man to receive this punt. First Oregon punt. snap pulled down nicely by Siri Siri and it's going to hit and now take a bit of an Oregon bounce at about the 14 yard line so Stanford will have a long field but they do get a stop on the Oregon Ducks for the first time today they'll have it with 708 remaining in the first quarter tied, third second quarter tied at 17. Well, still no Toby Gerhardt as the Cardinals start at the 14-yard line. Kimball, the running back. In motion, Petron, and the give to Kimball, not much. Antonio Salato on the tackle for the Ducks. Morgan's got to find a way now to take back the momentum in this football game and get this crowd going once again. Believe me, I've played in this stadium when Oregon is a very good football team, and they're a pretty good football team this year. This crowd gets wild, and it just emotionally drains you. When you make a small mistake, even a two-yard loss, it feels worse because of the crowd. And this crowd on the home team, at least on the offensive side of the ball right now. Pritchard going up, steps up, throws, got a man, catch made, Baldwin, first down Cardinal at the 26-yard line. A gain of 15. Pritchard looking all league right now. Absolutely, the heroes of this football game right now are the Cardinal offensive line. You see Pritchard just very comfortable in that pocket, able to step into that throw. Baldwin comes open across the middle inside that Oregon zone and makes a great play. You know, watching this Stanford team from what Jim Harbaugh inherited, a 1-11 program, he's really shown a knack for pushing the envelope in the Pac-10. One more victory, they go to a bowl game, Stanford does. I mean, they are way ahead of schedule in turning this program around. Absolutely. Give it Kimball. Kimball 
dragged down from behind after game yeah. three. Casey Matthews makes the stop. We're going to the sideline, Jim Watson. Waddy. Barry, we know that Oregon is a politically active state. It continues here in Eugene where the Ducks flock to the polls in unison on Tuesday. Before that, the team nutritionist, James Harris, he got a voter registration drive going to sign everybody up. Then Bellotti on Monday told everybody, make sure you vote tomorrow. Out-of-state guys sent in their absentee ballots, players debating politics in the locker room. As a whole, the team is pretty psyched about the election, but it's a tough week for the McCain guys. And whether they were blue or whether they were red today, oh, they're all wearing green, aren't they? That's right, exactly, as they always do. But the guys in the white right now battling. Pritchard play fake with time. And now he has to step up. Now he's going to run, trying to get the outside, ran into his own man. A little communications gap that time. Matt Copa wasn't quite sure which way Pritchard was going. You know, Barry, our producer, Jake Cutlow, made me vote. I voted for the first time in my life. That's impressive. That's a pretty good feeling. My first vote ever. When Cutlow found out that I had never voted before, I mean, he almost fired me off the package. Oh, showed up at your door, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> now third down and long for the Cardinals. Flags fall. No, I beg your pardon, a timeout call. So Stanford going to call its second timeout of the first half. Tied at 17. Pritchard going to be looking at a third down and long. And I guess it was a personnel issue for Stanford, getting the right bodies on the field. Well, Pac-10 fans, we want to remind you that you can log on to www.pac10.org for the chance to win two tickets to the 2008 Rose Bowl game. Just go to pac10.org and click on the logo that you see right up there, the top left-hand corner of your screen. Who's going to the Rose Bowl this year? That's a very good question. Could be the Oregon State Beavers for the first time in a long time. First time since the 50s, I believe. And Stanford handled that back in the first game. Stanford was talking about the fact that they they caught Oregon State at the right time. They caught Arizona State at the wrong time. Here's what's happening right now in the Pac-10. USC, they're 7-1. They play California today, but Oregon State is the team that are the masters of their own fate. If Oregon State wins out, they will be in that Rose Bowl, and Oregon State in the Mike Riley era has been perennially very strong going through the end of the season. Most of it has to do with the play of the quarterback. Once quarterbacks grasp Mike Riley's system, there's little stopping the Beavs as they go through the end of the season. And we talked about Jacquez Rogers as the Pac-10 Player of the Week on the offensive side last week. He's just an unbelievable back, and they always play fast and angry defense at Oregon State. They have a great chance to win out and make it into the Rose Bowl, but they got to get through this Oregon team, and they got to get through UCLA today. And their quarterback hurting a little bit right now. Probably won't play today. It's going to be Canfield, not Moiva. He's also experienced. Yeah, won it for him last week. Third down and long, Cardinal three of six and third down conversion. Out of the gun, Pritchard has a little time. Now he throws underneath, almost picked. Great job that time reacting to the ball by Jarris Bird. Well, Tavita Pritchard is not going to be able to hang up balls to running backs that far out in the flat. And I'll tell you exactly why. When those Oregon corners are up, Jarris Bird and Walter Thurman III, these are very fast, very physical corners. Pleasant trying to almost hurdle Kimball to get to that ball for the interception. He was far away from it. But the athleticism of these two Oregon cornerbacks and the two safeties, for that matter, is amazing. Here's a punt, a twisting kick, and it's going to be allowed to hit. And Oregon just trying to get away from it. It will be down at about the 32-yard line. That's where the Ducks will begin things at the 32 yard line tied at 17 a 38 yard punt but more significantly perhaps no return good field position for Oregon they'll start right at the 32 yard line Masoli drew a few boos the last time see how the crowd reacts to him this time well Jeremiah Masoli for what he's been able to do this year and he's run the football very well no, no, 424 no. yards coming into the game just hasn't thrown the ball well. Here's Jeremiah Johnson, already a 40-yard touchdown run under his belt. He picks up about nine more here. Masafilo makes the stop. And it starts to darken again here at Autzen Stadium.
Second down short. Again, it is Johnson. Johnson trying to kick it outside. Got a great block from Masoli. And is going to get it inside Stanford territory at the 49-yard line. Masoli with a comeback block. Putting a real hit on Pat Maynard. I mean, that was helmet to helmet by Masoli. Taylor Scoffle and Chris Evans end up making the tackle on Jeremiah Johnson. There you see Masoli with the big hit on Maynard. Bends him back. Arches Maynard's back with a hit. Great job. Once again, the give is to Johnson as they now will tempo up. They changed tempo a lot during the games. Now they're going very quickly, and now a late flag. And this is going to be a post-possession flag. I think it's going to be on Stanford on a late hit on Max Unger. After play, dead ball personal foul, number 20 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Uh, sometimes when you wear that big neck roll like Clinton Snyder, you feel like the rules don't apply to you. <laughs> After the whistle, Clinton Snyder puts a pretty big hit on a great, great offensive lineman for the University of Oregon, Max Unger, and he's being taken out of the game. You see the anger on the face of Clinton Snyder, a standout linebacker for the Cardinal. Yeah, the rules this time were applied on him. <laughs> First that, down at the neck roll. That, that's it, at the 28-yard line. Jim Arbon, no-nonsense guy, his whole staff that way. Masoli was going to throw. Now he steps away from trouble again, buys more time, and finally throws intended for male incomplete. You just get the feeling watching Jeremiah Masoli that he's, he's just not comfortable in that pocket. He's got great feet, but not on the same page with his receivers. Well, the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save time and fuel by shopping comfortably at home with Overstock.com. At home with the O. Yes, sir. So this time on the give to Blunt, not much, and again a flag comes in. And I think this time it's going to go the other way. The pace of this game is really slowed down. It is a hold. I believe it was Mark Lewis that they got. Holding, number 71 on the offense, 10-yard penalty. Replay second down. It was Mark Lewis. And again, these offensive linemen have a hard time hiding in this spread offense, and Mike Bellotti can't be pleased. Two holding penalties on the last two possessions for the Ducks have really hampered their chances. Now a second and long. And the slowed down pace of this game does favor the Stanford Cardinal. There's no question about it with the way they play. Three minutes remaining in the first half. This time it's Masoli on the keep looking for the pitch man. Now he gets the pitch man. And it's Mail, and Mail stays on his feet and is stopped right around the first down line. He's going to be a little short. Great display of beat by Jeff Mail, sophomore out of Paradise, California. Watch him tiptoe on the sideline. Stanford bodies flying everywhere. Finally, Bo McNally comes with the shoulder and knocks him out of bounds, but not before Mail. Looks like. Dead ball, false start, number 51 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. Now go back, ask Masoli, did you say one or two? <laughs> it, it's really amazing when you talk about what Chip Kelly has accomplished here at Oregon. And obviously last year, much better on offense with Dennis Dixon and Jonathan Stewart, but still just amazing. The things they can pull off in the no huddle and the substitutions they make, it's fantastic to watch. Yeah, it's really fun to talk with Chip, too. Here's a quick pass over the middle and a catch for a first down. Matt Larkin on the receiving end, the tight end. This is the third tight end for Oregon. And a big play right there. Pick up a 10. And a first down for Oregon at the 14-yard line. It's only on the keep this time, and he's stopped by McNally. Pickup of about two. One of the things Chip Kelly was talking about that really impressed us is in modern football, offensive coordinators are really trying to outsmart the defensive coordinator, maybe a little bit too much. And there's Chip Kelly right there. You can't miss him at a New Hampshire live free or die. But he doesn't care how they make the yardage. He says, if we got to run, we'll run. If we got to throw, we'll throw. Run! Well, this time he's going to run, and it's Jeremiah Johnson inside the 10-yard line, about the eight. It's going to be third down 
and about three. Scoffle makes the tackle for Stanford. Stanford juggling a lot of bodies defensively, trying to keep people fresh, because you mentioned it earlier, P, but they have tired at the end of games. They tired against Notre Dame, they tired against TCU, both games that they had a chance to win and wound up losing down the stretch. Well, anybody thinks that Oregon has superior athletes to Stanford is absolutely right. Yeah. That doesn't always win games. Here's Masoli, looks the end zone, throws, knocked out of the hands of Drew Davis. He had him. I'll make it Drew Davis, and it was Chris Evans who knocked the ball out of his hand. Nice ball by Masoli. Drew Davis getting a start today for Jason Williams has made some good plays. That's why they tell you catch it the first time. Chris Evans does a good job knocking it away. Well, coming up at halftime on the Direct TV halftime show, Golding, DeMarco Farby in the studio. Top 25 scores, a lot of important games going on right now. You can still text 310-425-9455. Field goal try, Morgan Flint, he made his first. This will be a 26-yarder, and he drives it through. And Oregon has retaken the lead. They lead it 20-17, to 17, 55 ticks remaining first half. Got through had he have not had the ball knocked out of his hands. And then he had a 40 yard return the next time. Impressive that the Cardinal is getting this done without Toby Gerhardt. Four carries, six yards before stripping a, a groin muscle. And we don't know whether or not he will return in the second half. Evanson will squib this one. It takes a high hop as it goes. Plus, fumbles it again. Now he bounces off one man gets to the 23-yard line, and I'm sure Jim Harbaugh's hot heart stopped. Well, kickoffs in this game have absolutely been an adventure from the very first one. Patrick Chung coming down and making the stop on Owusu after the ball bounced off his shoulder pads and went pretty far in front of him. Owusu did a good job of just recovering his composure and grabbing the ball and getting it beyond the 20-yard line. I would expect that the Cardinal will not try to do anything fancy here with 49 seconds remaining. Stanford only has one timeout remaining. They used up two timeouts, so I would be inclined to think that Stanford would just run this football. Shows you what I know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> throws and a one hopper intended for a Wusu. Well, that's a tall order for Tavita Pritchard. He did come back and win against Arizona. There's no question about that. And of course, we all remember what happened against USC last year in the Coliseum, but asking Pritchard to take it all the way down the field with his arm with 45 seconds left on the clock is going to be tough for him. He's much more of a game manager than a game winner at the quarterback position. Still going without a fullback here, so it's a passing formation. And Pritchard's going to keep this time when the option flag comes in. Pritchard will get it short of the 30-yard line to see about the penalty. The Ducks saying it is against Stanford. Holding, number 63 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Replay second down. Chris Marinelli, who uh, got a start today for the first time since being injured in the game against UCLA. We didn't really expect to see him, and he wound up starting. So now it's going to be second down and 20. Oregon still has three timeouts remaining, and they might be inclined to use one after this play. Puts it to Kimball, and Kimball will get it to about the 15 yard line. And the clock does stop, and Oregon has called a timeout. Well, it was great backside timeout Purdue pursuit Oregon. by Jerome Boyd. Jerome Boyd coming to the backside and really taking out Anthony Kimball on that play. And Stanford really put themselves in a bad position with the incomplete pass on first down. They should have just run the ball like you said, Barry. Well, it gives us an opportunity to jump in the old Acura P and uh, watch out for this mail truck. Look out! <laughs> 
going to take the drive around campus. This is Animal House. That was Dean Wormer's house. Double secret probation for everybody. That was the food fight cafeteria. We all remember that sorority, Belushi up on the ladder. Knowledge is good, old Faber College. That's right. No love for Emily Dickinson College on the drive around campus, though. Come <laughs> that's on. right. That's right. Fawn Leibowitz. <laughs> One of the all time I mean, movies. come on. <laughs> Never, you know, you just can't not watch it. So Lucas is going to be the quarterback here on third down now for the Cardinals. Oregon can stop the clock again. They possibly could get the ball back here. Lucas just going to keep it himself and be stopped for a loss of about a yard back at the 14-yard line. And there's 30 seconds left. T.J. Ward made the stop. And Oregon will get this ball back and ostensibly get it back in reasonable field position. Now, what do you do here? Do you play run back or do you try to block this? Well, you go for the return because Chip Kelly's got a plan offensively to get some kind of big chunks of yardage. There is a play that they can dial up, and Jim Harbaugh can't be happy with that first down call of the pass. And there's your BCS top 10, Barry. It's a, it's a wild scene once again every yeah. year. And the guys, I'm sure, in the studio will talk about Alabama, but they were trailing when last we looked, LSU. So they could come up with a loss. Texas Tech is a tough game. They're playing Oklahoma State, although it is at their place. Penn State was behind Iowa early in that ball game, so things could change dramatically here. Well, especially with Alabama. I mean, they're a good football team, but they're playing 15 true freshmen. They've been taking the wall by Ole Miss at home. They had trouble with Kentucky. Now they're in Death Valley and all that vitriol toward Nick Saban. That's a tough place to play, especially with 15 true freshmen playing on your roster. Well, that's right. So Bird going to be the deep man. Left footed punt is going to hit fairly short and take a good Stanford bounce. And it is going to get down about the 32 yard line. Jarris Bird didn't have a chance that time. Pretty good execution, I think, for the Stanford Cardinal. And it winds up being a 53 yard punt for David Green. Well, once again, excellence on the special teams helps out the Cardinal and appears to, for at least right now, gotten them out of a tough situation. 21 seconds remaining here in the first half. Flugrad is in the backfield, and they're just going to take a knee and not even bother with this. So they didn't get the good field position, and the Oregon Ducks, interestingly enough, are going to go off to a chorus of boos as the fans are not real happy with the Oregon offense. And Masoli is having his struggles, but the bottom line is his team leads it. It's a 20 to 17 ball game as we come to the end of the first half. And uh, Mike Bellotti, uh, I'm sure we'll have some interesting thoughts. Right now, let's send it to Jim Watson for FreeCreditReport.com sideline report. Waddy. Very kind of strange to hear some boos at Autzen Stadium. You're up by two touchdowns at the end of the first. Your defense is playing great. What happened? Well, we stopped playing great on defense. We gave up some third down conversions. We gave them great field position with two poor plays on special teams. It's simple. Do we just have to keep it up, keep the energy up, and get going? I know we were keeping an eye on Masoli to see if he'd calm down in that pocket. Any chance to see in Roper? Where are you right now? Uh, we'll talk about it. There, there was a chance. We'll just see. I, I think Jeremiah, again, is getting better. Last series, hits the guy in the end zone for a touchdown. We just drop it. So, Appreciate the time, Mike. Thank you very much. All right. Halftime in Eugene. It's 20 to 17 right now. We send you to our college football Saturday studio, the Direct TV halftime show with our good friends Mike Goldberg and DeMarco Farr, who are warm and dry in L.A. The other's best shot. Yeah, indeed, especially Stanford early in the game with the early turnover, and Oregon got started fast, and it almost looked like it was going to be a blowout, but Stanford got their bearings like that old Donovan song, Get Thy Bearings, and they're so well coached by Jim Harbaugh. This is not a team that's going to get blown out a whole lot. They figured it out. They ran the football. They kept it simple. They really had a lot of possession time and a lot of plays run, especially all the way through the first quarter. Even with Toby Gerhardt going out, they ran their off and they looked really good in a very hostile play. Well, Oregon's going to get the football first to start the second half. Thurman and Crenshaw going to be the deep man. As you see, the sky's darkening here. Pretty sure you can see that at home. The lights of the stadium started to take hold. And there is a steady rain. And it's not just a drizzle as it was before. So Zachary will kick it off 
for the Stanford Cardinal, and that tells you everything you need to know about the weather conditions here. And it is a high end over end short kick. Thurman at the 10 to the 20. Trying to take it to the outside. Got to get flagged down. 35 to the 40. Zachary can't get him. He's at midfield to the 40 yard line. Still on his feet and out of bounds to the 30. But I believe this one is coming back. 55 yards on the return, but a flag sitting ominously at the 23 yard line. McNally with what was a saving tackle, but that long, Walking slow back walk back by the now. Return team. Ten yard penalty, first down. And instead of having the ball deep in Stanford territory, in fact, the Oregon Ducks will start at about their own 13. Here's another look. Well, everything set up pretty good for Walter Thurman, but there you see the flag right there, way back, and that's what sprung the play. Great effort, even on the kick return that was fumbled by Walter Thurman, the 30, gave it great effort. And that was almost the reason he fumbled, but that time very frustrating, especially for the returner and the rest of the return team to have a penalty called and be put in that situation after such a fine return. So Masoli remains the quarterback. And the give on first down to Johnson, and he is met immediately by his Sioni Fua. Fua at 305 just engulfed Johnson. Well, here are the numbers uh, at the end of the first half, and... Uh, Oregon out passing Stanford, but I thought actually Stanford was more efficient in the passing game. Oregon did have that 145-yard pass to Davis. Kind of skews those stats a little bit. Here's Johnson again. Johnson this time gets a little gap. Try to step the outside. Look out. He's the 30. He's the 40. And he is finally run down from behind by Vince Evans at the 42-yard line of Stanford. Chris Evans, I beg your pardon, at the 42-yard line of Stanford, a 48-yard run for Jeremiah Johnson, and he has been a difference maker for Oregon. Well, he had the big run in the first half this time, just showing great feet getting around. Looks like a hold there on Bo McNally. Sure no did. flags. Nice cut back by Johnson, and finally he is corralled. But this guy's just got great feet, great moves, and he goes up the field so well, the young man out of Los Angeles, California. And a definite hold on the play. Here's LeGarrette Blunt gets the corner, and he cuts it back inside. Going to be close to another first down. All right, once more, let's send to Jim Watson, a free credit report.com sideline report. Waddy! Barry, I talked to uh, Jim Harbaugh coming out of the locker room. He actually liked the way his defense played in the first half. He said they're flying to the football and they're stopping the run. That hasn't happened so far. Offensively, he was very impressed with Kimball. Didn't have great numbers, but Anthony was effective when he touched the ball. Remember, Toby Gerhardt missed most of the first half. They said he will be back. He is available. I said, what about that fake field goal? He said, we've never run it before. Perfect, wasn't it? <laughs> And here's some shoddy tackling once again by the Stanford Cardinal, which will not make Jim Harbaugh happy. And a first down Oregon at the 20-yard line, a gain of 12 for Blunt. Well, after the great play on the very first play of this drive for Oregon, Sione Fula just missed a tackle there. Clinton Snyder missed a tackle as well. And Taylor Scoffle missed two tackles on the two plays before that. This is great running, though by LeGarrette Blunt. He is a very physical back. He's a guy that has some limitations in pass protection, but knows what to do with the ball. And this is Masoli trying to get to the edge and does flag down. Masoli's knocked out of bounds at about the 18-yard line. We'll see about the flag. Penalties have hurt the Oregon Ducks. Holding penalties on each of their last three drives going back to the second quarter. I think they're going to get Terrence Scott out there on the perimeter. Illegal block at the back. Number eight on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. And well, there it is, right in the foreground. Terrence Scott with the hold and the illegal block on yes, Chris both. Evans. So now it's going to be first down and 18 as the rains continue to come down here in Eugene. Oh, oh, oh. Ball loose. Cardinal have it at the 34-yard line. No Oregon player reacted to that fumble despite the calls, as you could, I'm sure you could hear. Ball, 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 ball. Yep, Tom McAndrew was the only guy who saw it. So again, the Cardinal get a big break. There's McAndrew getting right on it, covering it up. Stanford will have it when we come back.
brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop with the company that supports college football, Overstock.com. At home with the O. So the Cardinal takes over after the fumble recovery by McAndrew. Kimball remains the tailback for Stanford. This is Kimball. Bounce to the outside, gets a little room, gets ahead to the 40-yard line, pick up a seven on first down. T.J. Ward and Casey Matthews on the tackle. Well, I tell you what, Stanford looks a lot more comfortable in the rain than the Oregon Ducks do. I never thought I'd hear myself saying that in my lifetime. Oregon played through heavy rain in a loss at Cal last week, while Stanford was also playing through rain in its home win over Washington State. Now, Washington State, not a great football team this year, but Oregon really struggled in the rain against Cal, especially their quarterback, Masoli, with two interceptions and a fumble. Yeah, you saw that graphic. Turnover's costly last week, and so far, costly again. Kimball pops into the open. Look out, takes it to the outside, needs a block. He's at the 30, he's at the 20, and knocked out of bounds. Walter Thurman knocked him out of bounds to save a Stanford touchdown, but a big gain on the play for Kimball. 43 yards. Well, Kimball sees the hole, gets by his center, who's on one knee in the middle of the hole, Alex Fletcher, and just is able to express himself going down the field with his legs. A very shifty back. Does a great job taking it down the field, and guess who's back in the game, Barry? Yep, Toby Gerhardt back in the ball game for the first time since going out with what we thought was a groin injury, and we hear now maybe a little bit of a hammy. First down, just outside the 21-yard line. Here is Gerhardt. Gerhardt is going to be stopped just as he gets started by Jerome Boyd. Well, depending how Toby's leg feels, this is a very good situation for him to be in if he is feeling okay to run that football down the field. I don't think we're going to see that pitch to Toby Gerhardt where he got hurt. There you see what he's doing right now in the Pac-10 rushing-wise. We thought he'd go over 1,000 yards today, but he's been a little beat up. But if his legs are fresh and he feels okay, this could be a huge boost for the Cardinal. No gain on his first carry, so it'll be second down and 10. And this time, Pritchard gonna roll out. Buys a lot of time. Wants his receiver to come back. He had a man in the end zone. He let him go, and he'll take it down to the 10-yard line, and I believe he's gonna have a first down. Looked to me like Baldwin was open to the back of the end zone. He did have Baldwin, but at the same time, to beat a Pritchard, make it a pretty nice decision there. He saw that he had some room. A little bit of over-pursuit by the Duck defense. He's coming out on the movement play. He's got an underneath receiver and two guys over the top, but just decides to tuck it away. Jerome Boyd overran the play a little bit, dives forward and gets a first down. That's a nice play in my book. Yeah, no, I think so. Kimball back in the ball game now. Catron is the fullback out of the eye formation. Pritchard give to Kimball. Kimball kind of tiptoes into the hole and doesn't get anything as Casey Matthews stands him up. We go to the sideline once more, Jim Watson, Waddy. Barry, Petros was just talking about how strange it is that Stanford looks more comfortable in the rain than the Oregon Ducks. But if you look at the rosters, actually Oregon has more guys from California, 36, than Stanford, 23. And when I was walking in today, I came across the Willamette River, and there was a vendor out there selling all kinds of T-shirts. One of them said, the University of California at Eugene. Yeah, no, that's very true, and they always have a preponderance of players from the state of California. Stanford, of course, recruits nationally. Their recruiting list is a lot smaller than most of the schools, all of the schools, certainly in the Pac-10, and most of the schools in the country. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we move along here. There's an inside handoff to Kimball. Kimball gets a little gap for the five to the two-yard line. I like Kimball's feet. He's got great feet, and this offense and defense and the special teams, all three phases for the Cardinal, play with an unbelievable level of composure and confidence. Like we were saying, Oregon's got much better athletes than Stanford does. There's no question about it. But like you said in the first half, Barry, that doesn't always mean you're a better football team. And right now, even though Oregon has the lead, Stanford is coming on, and they're leaving Kimball in the game in this short yarded situation, even though he's not better than Gerhardt at pushing the pile. Gerhardt started onto the field and was pulled back by the Stanford coaches. Richard going to throw to the end zone. And Drake can't hang on. Double coverage there. And Pritchard trying to force that ball in. Boyd was there. Ward was there. And it was Gunder. The intended receiver had no chance. Well, the fake might have worked a little better if they left Toby Gerhardt out onto the field. He was 
pulled back, like you said, Barry, trying to get Jim Dre involved. Two receptions this year, two touchdowns. This would have been three and three for the junior tight end who's had a lot of problems with his legs. Can't come down with it that time. Nice throw, though, by Pritchard. Zagary comes on to try and tie the ball game. 19 yarder, and Zagary drills it, and this game is tied at 20 with eight minutes, 54 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter, and the rain's continuing to fall. Johnson and McAndrew comes up with the fumble recovery and there you see the rain really coming down here at Autzen Stadium. It's been on and off all afternoon. It's kind of game that makes you wish they had artificial mud, doesn't it? <laughs> and this is going to be Crenshaw getting it back to the 30-yard line. So no Morgan adventure. Was... No adventure on that kickoff. None whatsoever. Crenshaw, first chance he's had. Well, Pac-10 fans, go to OralWeek.com for your chance to win a VIP Rose Bowl package. One lucky fan will win a prize package that includes five days and four nights in sunny Pasadena, including tickets to the Rose Bowl game and the Rose Parade. Check out OralWeek.com for more information. OralWeek is a proud sponsor of Pac-10 football. OralWeek, bread, perfected. I like bread. Wish I had more of it. <laughs> Soak up some of the rain. <laughs> Blunt this time gets the call and doesn't get much. Stanford turns that one backward. Again, it was Sione Fua, first man to LeGarrette Blunt. Well, the Ducks just have to relax within their offense at this point. They're in a tie game against a very well-coached football team, but the Stanford defense, because they don't play a lot of guys, has a tendency to wear down in the fourth quarter. If Masoli could just relax and not turn the ball over, run the ball, do what he does, they'll be all right. Masoli going to throw. Rush comes. Masoli throws a screen and a fumble. The ball loose again. Stanford has it once again. Osaisai well, comes away with a football. And Stanford will have it at the 38-yard line of Oregon. Here's another look at it. Well, it's just a screen, a wide receiver screen. Flugrad was the receiver, and he just had it stripped away. Scoffle makes the tackle and will pommel Osaisai, the Pac-10 100-meter champion comes up with the fumble recovery before he takes a helmet right in the back by so, Mark Lewis. Once again, miscues really hurting the Oregon Ducks. It's the third Oregon fumble. Pritchard straight back, throws in and out of the hands that time. And int the intended receiver, who was Kobe Fleener, and Fleener thought more about where he was going than catching the ball. Well, I'll tell you what, this Stanford defense has caused some turnovers and been fortunate picking it up a couple turnovers, but Ron Lynn's contributions on this Stanford defense, their defensive coordinator, have not gone unnoticed. This is a much better, much more physical defense, and there you see the man that caused the fumble there, Taylor Scoffle. Yeah, Ron Lynn has instilled a toughness in this defense, too, and he gets absolute maximum out of the personnel that he has. This time Pritchard out of the gun, and he was going to hand it off. Now he's got no place to go. That's a complete botched play right there. That's the way you draw up a botched play. Well, especially <laughs> when the quarterback looks to his right, looks to his left, back to his right, and then absolutely has nowhere to go. Pritchard would have been a, in a much better situation just to take it to the line of scrimmage. The two very physical Oregon defensive ends finally getting to him, Nick Reed and Will Tukuafu. Right now, they are out of Zagary's field, field goal range as well. So back at the 42-yard line. Well, it all started with the drop pass by Fleener on first down. Stanford had a good situation to at least get half of the 10 yards they needed on first down. Didn't happen. And the crowd gets right back into it. Deep drop this time. Now Pritchard steps up, and now he's in trouble. Gets away from one man. Now he's going to tuck it away, step out of bounds at about the 39-yard line, take the safe way out. So it will put Stanford, I, I would have to think, in a punting situation. can't imagine they would uh, try a 56-yard field goal in this weather. And it will be Green who will come on to try to pin the Ducks back. 
Stanford's been great on special teams for almost all of this afternoon, except for the fumble on the opener. This is a big special teams play for Stanford. Green hits this one high, a twisting kick. And that is going to be interference in the ability to make the catch. Going to be called on Snyder. A little bit too aggressive that time. Well, Clinton Snyder got pulled for the, from the game in the first half for Will Powers because of a personal foul late hit on Max Unger. This time, Clinton Snyder doesn't really know where he is on the football field. I think he thought that was a fake fair catch. Team, 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. So that's only a TV plus nine up. for Stanford as Oregon will have it at the 29. This is Blunt. Blunt cuts it up, gets some room, 35-40, and up to a 45-yard line before he is tripped up by Pat Maynard and Taylor Scoffle. Nice patience by LeGarrette Blunt. A lot of the time in rainy situations, backs making cutbacks slip and go down. LeGarrette Blunt does a great job stopping his feet and finding his way up the football field. Gain of 17 on the play and a first down across the 45. And this time on the reverse to Scott. And Scott coming off the wing position to get some room also. He's inside the 45 to about the 43-yard line, and that's going to be another first down, a gain of 11. Chris Evans finally makes the tackle, and right now you can see what Chip Kelly's doing. Not too concerned with Masoli dropping back and being in that pocket and throwing the ball downfield. And why should they be right now when they're getting big chunks in this drive on the ground to start out? Interesting, though. Jeremiah Johnson, nine carries for 126 yards, and yet he's not in the ball game very much. This time it's Masoli on the keeper, and he gets out of the 38-yard line. He'll gain five on the play. Well, that's not the kind of first down run you expect from your quarterback, but what a physical run by Jeremiah Masoli. Really carrying Chike Amajoy with him all the way for a nice five-yard gain. I mean, that looked like LeGarrette Blunt running the ball. Soli's a tough kid. And here's Blunt. Blunt's got a gap. He's the 20. He's the 15. They're not going to get him. Touchdown, Oregon. 38 yards. And that was quick. We talked about the Cardinal defense wearing down in the fourth quarter. Here it is in the third quarter. They get a turnover on the last series. Really put their offense in a good position. Richard can't do anything with his offense. And here you go. They're starting to miss tackles and wear down. LeGarrette Blunt once again with a very nice cutback. Has his feet under him in the rain. Does not slip. Finds the middle of the field and takes it to the house. Great run by the junior college transfer out of East Mississippi Junior College. By way of Perry, Florida, LeGarrette Blunt, we've seen him have some great long runs this year, Barry, for a big physical guy. He sure can't get out when he has to. And here's Amadroy coming off the field with a little hitch in his giddy up as he was dinged on that play. Taylor Scoffle was helped off the field after the last play. 38 yard touchdown run, and Stanford getting beat up now on the defensive side of the ball. So on to try the extra point is Morgan Flint, who's been very effective so far. That drives that through, and Oregon now leads it 27 to 20. 5.33 left, third quarter. Great year in his first year in Division I college football at Garrett Blunt. A line drive kick, and Owusu coming back right up the gut. Got a little gap, and it closed down quickly as he got to the 35-yard line. And we go to the sideline, Jim Watson with a duck report. <laughs> Barry, we all know that Orkin can get a little gimmicky. They bring the duck onto the field on the back of a Harley before games. And just a couple of minutes ago, they took the tree out on the field, get it, the Stanford tree, and cut it down. But the weather is so bad, the rain is coming out so heavy, the chainsaw actually stalled, so the duck just kind of kicked the thing over. And I'll tell you what, we've seen everything today. We've seen light rain, sprinkles, we've seen rainbows. And I'll tell you now, it is, while the sky has turned ugly, my friend, it is dark, 
and it is coming down pretty hard, and it's also a lot colder. I'm standing down here just getting dumped on. In a related story, I hate both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the heater underneath our table oh, here beautiful. Is, is functioning really well this time. It wasn't so great last time when we were here. It was 65. It's coming down pretty hard, and it's also a lot colder. I'm standing down here just getting dumped on. In a related story, I hate both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the heater underneath our table oh, here beautiful. Is, is functioning really well this time. It wasn't so great last time when we were here. It was 65. I took my sport coat off. It's like the Bahamas up here. Stanford on first down. Kimball about a step away from breaking that. He's at the 45-yard line. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop with the company that supports college football, Overstock.com. At home with the O. Tell you what, I'm a little disappointed that the Cardinal didn't bring the tree with him. By far my favorite mascot in all of college football is that dancing tree with the crazy legs dancing style. Dutch elm disease has been running around in you know, the Bay Area. We really have to agree to disagree on the, uh, on the tree. I know. I love I, the tree. I know you do. <laughs> That's our first fight. <laughs> this time, Pritchard oh. on the keeper and saying hello to Spencer Facinger. Or was it Spencer Facinger? <laughs> well, he definitely hit Pritchard right in the neck. Demita Pritchard with the fake and didn't expect Facinger coming right off that edge. And you expect the Will linebacker to have a lot of plays free. And that's a nice textbook big tackle. That's how you make a tackle. Doesn't matter if it's a quarterback, running back, wide receiver. Offensive lineman, whoever's running that football, that's the way you tackle a great play by Spencer Pacinger, who's had a renaissance year at Oregon. And a big play right here for the Stanford offense. They need to do something to stop the bleeding. And now they're going to have to call a timeout. And in a close game, you hate to see that. With four minutes to play in the third quarter, Stanford's going to have to burn a timeout. To me, to Pritchard, looks like he might have been shaken a little bit from that tackle. I certainly would be. Yeah. And maybe that's why the timeout was called. All right, let's uh, take a look then. We have a moment at our best buy. The ball at the 43-yard line, Stanford. And this time the Ducks come with a late blitz. Pritchard throws over the middle and a great grab that time by Delano Howell. And a flag comes in late. It's right at the 50-yard line and a late flag. Nice throw. Great concentration by Howell to haul it in if indeed he got it. The Oregon players were calling for an incomplete pass. And then the late flag comes in. I'm not really sure what happened. There was After the play, drawing going unsportsmanlike on. conduct, number 29 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, there you are. There's your answer, T.J. Ward. A little mouthy with one of the Stanford players. Watch the catch by Howell. Well, here comes Delano Howell, the freshman who's been playing a lot for Jim Harbaugh toward the end of the season. Makes the catch. Brutal hit. And that's Eddie Pleasant on the big hit. And it was the talking by T.J. Ward that was the penalty. What a huge break, not only with the first down play, if indeed it was a first down, but with the penalty, it doesn't matter on T.J. Ward. T.J. Ward, a great tackler, a great player, but really hurt his team there. Penalties have really been costly for the Oregon Ducks in this game. Give Stanford a new life. They're at the 35-yard line. Lucas, the quarterback, he's got some room, and he falls forward across the 30 to about the 29-yard line. Once more, here's Waddy. Well, we've been watching Delano Howell, this freshman, and he's really becoming something for Stanford. Harbaugh loves him, says he's one of my favorites. And in a meeting earlier this week, Harbaugh said, Delano, you did a great job last week, but don't let me overcoach you. Harbaugh is telling a freshman, you're a great football player. Don't let me overcoach you. If I do, let me know. Gerhardt loves him, said he's an animal. McAnally says the kid's a beast. They're trying to get him all over the field. Remember, he came to Stanford as a defensive back. Yeah, he's going to be a big-time player for this team. This is a very good young football team. Here's Kimball trying to dance into the hole, and he can't do it. He stopped for no game. You know, even if Harbaugh was overcoaching me and he had told me, tell me if I'm overcoaching you, I, I don't think I'd say anything to him. No, I, I, I think, think I'd just so. let him overcoach me. I don't think I'd ever look at my head coach or position coach at the college level and say, you know what, you're overcoaching me. But, <laughs> but a very nice gesture by Jim Harbaugh telling his young running back, Delano Allen, 
don't let me overcoach you. Big third down coming up for the Cardinal, and we haven't seen Toby Gerhardt since he came in very early in that third quarter. They gotta hurry and get this playoff here. Harbaugh was jumping up and down trying to get him out of the huddle, and they do get it off in time, and it's Lucas given this time to Kimball, flag down. And Kimball still on his feet inside the 15 to about 13, but we'll see about the flag. Thrown in the area where generally it is a holding call. Holding, number 63 on the offense, 10-yard penalty, replay third down. Chris Marinelli, second time he's been guilty today. Well, that's going to turn Stanford into a third and 15 situation, and that is not a good situation. Toby Gerhardt back onto the field for the Cardinal. There you see Marinelli with the hold, and that is exactly what sprung Kimball. Nice call by the official. I can see the numbers on in the penalty department. Ten penalties combined for these two teams so far. It's been a physical football game as we expected it would be. Third down and 15. Pritchard straight back. Throws, ball's caught this time by Gunder, but it's gonna be well short of the first down and 52 yards from here, if you're thinking about a field goal, T.J. Ward is there on the tackle. And uh, it's a real tough decision here for Harbaugh. You certainly would think that you wouldn't want to punt the ball from here, so Stanford, it appears, is gonna go for it. And they're still going to have Toby Gerhardt in the game. That's the first time we've seen Gerhardt in the game since we, very early in this third quarter. Not sure how much he can help them in this situation on fourth and ten. So it's going to be fourth down and ten. Richard goes under center. Thunder comes in motion. They just get the snap off. Pritchard with time steps up, throws deep, looking for Owusu, and he cannot hang on in the end zone. So the ball will go over to the Oregon Ducks. Right idea of a double coverage there. Not a bad throw either, but the double coverage of Jarris Bird and T.J. Ward is going to be very difficult to slide that ball in there. It would have been an unbelievable catch and play by Owusu if he was able to pull it off, especially in these sloppy conditions. And I can't help but think that these conditions have something to do with a lot of the penalties we've seen in this football game as well. Both teams having a hard time just finding their way and getting their bearing. So now, 49 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Oregon on a bit of a roll. They lead it 27 to 20. They've been able to run the ball extremely well here in the second half. Stanford has just not been able to stop them. Jeremiah Johnson is back in the ball game. He's already had two 40-yard-plus runs. And here is Johnson again at the right side. Steps out of a tackle. And still managed to turn it upfield. He did get to the edge. Not going to get much out of it, if anything. Pretty good pursuit that time from the Stanford defense. Eric Lorig and a lot of different Cardinal defenders chasing Jeremiah Johnson. And you see the two backs for the Ducks, both of them very productive in this football game. And again, Chip Kelly does not care how they get it. He said it's not a beauty contest. If we got to run the ball to get our yardage and pick up scores, that's what we're going to do. Second and 12, here comes Johnson the other way. And again, he gets that little gap, but it closes down quickly. And Johnson will get about three. And it's going to be third down and nine. Pat Maynard on the stop for Stanford. That was the same play that went for 41 just a couple of moments ago. Going to be interesting to see what Oregon does in this third and long situation. Of course, they're not going to huddle up. Stanford has only thrown the ball twice here in the third quarter. This will be the end of the third quarter as Masoli heads to the sideline. Are they going to run the ball with a quarterback? Are they going to run the read option? How are they going to handle it? Well, they're going to have some time to think about it. If the third quarter comes to an end, the rains continue to fall. Been a little bit sloppy, but so is the weather. Oregon leads it 27 to 20. One quarter of football remaining to be played here in Eugene. We're coming back. We start the fourth and final period. Let me fix some numbers that we mentioned earlier. Stanford, 16 plays in the second half. 11 runs, five passes. Oregon, 13 runs. They have not thrown the ball until now. Masoli, a screen. He's got room. That's Johnson, 40, 45, midfield to the 45, to the 40-yard line of Stanford in the first down. And a big one. Will Powers makes the stop. But all of a sudden, Stanford's starting to get knocked back off the ball. 25 yards on that play. The Cardinal is tiring defensively. 
the field's very spread out with Jason Williams way up top and a nice screen. They really suck the defensive end, Tom Kaiser. He comes flying in. Jeremiah Johnson able to get up underneath him and a nice head of steam before anybody got to him. Easy first down for the Ducks. At the 39-yard line, there's Williams in motion and to give to Johnson again. And this time, Johnson with no place to go and a flag once more. Stanford's going to have a hard time winning. Masoli this time give it to Johnson. Johnson taking people with him. Picked up about five where there really wasn't anything to begin with. Fua and McAndrew on the stop for Stanford. And there's uh, the numbers that we were just talking about. Oregon just about e even pass run in the first half, just about. Second half, just one pass and went for 25 yards. And this time it's Masoli on the keeper, and Masoli lost the ball! And I believe the Cardinal have it back again. They do! Pennell Igbo recovers for Stanford, the fourth lost fumble by the Oregon Ducks, and that one is huge. And it was an effort fumble, similar as the one we saw from Walter Thurman the third, Jeremiah Masoli. And it looks like Bo McNally was really trying to get that ball loose and eventually did. That ball was very low, not great ball security by the quarterback. And he's got it hanging down there. Actually tried to use the ball and the arm to balance himself to stay up. And Masoli in that situation, as a quarterback especially, has just got to get down and live to fight another day as their offense had a great chance. Now Stanford with new life again that their defense has given them. Can the offense take advantage? Which it has not here in the second half. Jim Dre goes in motion, and the give is to Kimball. Kimball on a cutback. Came very close to popping that. Picks up about four yards. Jerome Boyd on the stop for Oregon. You can see the weather conditions uh, continuing to degenerate here. And there you see Masoli, no doubt, on the phone with his offensive coordinator, Chip Kelly. This is just a kid that has a hard time playing in the rain. Not comfortable in the pocket. Likes to run the football, but that time gets out and runs and makes another mistake. And it's very interesting. We heard that if Masoli did not play well, that he was going to be pulled for Roper, and that has not happened. They're just happier running the football and keeping things very simple. There's Pritchard this time on a rollout, looks downfield, and throws it away. Man was covered all the way. It was Ryan Whalen, and there was only a couple of people in the pattern at all. Patrick Chung makes the stop. So now Stanford looking at a third down and long once more. Gerhardt comes back into the game for the Cardinal. Gerhardt's in the game. Anthony Kimball also in the game. Kimball's over 100 yards. 21 carries for 101 yards in the game so far. And Pritchard's going to have to burn another timeout. And that is not good clock management. Stanford's been taking a lot of time in the huddles. And they use their second time out in the second half. We were married. Stanford facing a third down and a long six. Gerhardt is the running back. Kimball not in the ball game right now. They have three receivers to the left side, one to the right. They need six. In fact, a little bit more than six. This little crowd. High snap, Pritchard pulls it down. Now he throws deep, looking for Baldwin. Got it at midfield! It's Whalen on the catch, and a first down, a 29-yard pickup. Well, if the Autzen crowd was ever going to get to the Stanford team, it would have been there on third down, but it doesn't happen. Tavita Pritchard, very comfortable in the pocket and really able to release that ball well, hang it up there for Whalen to make the catch. We saw him make a beautiful catch in the first half. This one bounces off his chest and off his wrist, but he gets the feet inbounds. Patrick Chung, Walter Thurman, the third in the area, but still first down Cardinal, big play. What a huge play. Pritchard gonna go up on first down, swing out of the backfield for Campbell, got some blocking at the 40, at the 35, at the 30-yard line, dragged down at the 28-yard line. 
well executed play and a pickup of 22. So after being stagnant, Stanford has picked up 51 yards in a hurry. And this is not an easy throw to make for quarterbacks. One foot in front of the numbers or the tailback. There is a flag down on the field. And Stanford moving backward. 26 on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. Call it on Delano Howell. And that negates a very big play for Stanford. It's going to move them all the way back to about the 43-yard line. Very unfortunate for Stanford, and Hal doesn't know what he did. We didn't see a hold on the play. The flag was hidden as well, unless it came out very late. It seemed like a well-executed play by the Cardinal. They still have a first down, but now it's first and very long, and that really hurts Stanford because they're not a big play team despite that long throw to Wayland. Patrick Chung left a moment ago with an injury also, and wrapped up right as he gets the football. Well, moving ahead with the football, I beg your pardon. I thought he gave it up to Gerhardt, and he didn't. It was Alex Lucas on the keeper to midfield. Pick up of seven. Well, here's going to be the hold on Delano Howell. There it is right there. They're going to say that's a hold on Boyd. Didn't look like much of a hold to me. So now it's going to be second down. At about 11. Lucas remains the quarterback. Lucas can throw the football, incidentally. Really? Yeah. He's going to do it right here. I'll show you. Look. He's in trouble. <laughs> I don't think he ever felt the presence of Will Tukwafu coming from behind him. Well, the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Overstock.com's prices are so low, you can afford to buy something for your friends, too. Overstock.com. With the O. I'd buy you a little something. Really? Yeah. I got something picked out. Is it a hat? You know how much I like hats. And you own them all. Hats off, brother. <laughs> now third down a bunch for the Cardinals. Richard back in the ball game. Look out. Richard gets away from trouble. Now he rolls out, buys himself some time. And he is in trouble. And you know what? That time I was watching his receivers down the field. His receivers did not react at all. They didn't come back to him. They didn't move. They were just standing there to the sideline. Jim Watson, Wani. Barry, besides the Oregon defense, the conditions have really gotten bad. So Stanford's trying to throw. Remember last week, they called that a monsoon. I'm walking the Stanford bench, and they're telling me that this is actually worse than it was last week. And more importantly than all that, the product is completely broken down in my hair. <laughs> I hate when that happens. <laughs> At least he doesn't hate us anymore. This ball's been slipping on Fletcher, snapping the ball. I mean, it is bad out there. Green's punt, twisted kick, short kick. They will let this bounce, and now he touches the ball, does Burton. He's going to have to go back and dive on it at the seven-yard line, and I'm sure that caused a little screaming from the Oregon coaching staff. Ducks have it and have the lead by seven. And the rains continue to fall here, 27 to 20. Oregon leads it. They start at their own seven-yard line. They have not been able to hold on to the football. And the give this time is to Blunt, and Blunt, no place to go, and he is barely going to be able to get out of the end zone. They're going to spot this at about the one-yard line, probably inside the one-yard line. His body was in the end zone. That's a little bit of inexperience shown from LeGarrett Blunt inside his own 10-yard line and stopping and moving backwards to try to get more yards. Oregon's in a situation now where they want to have a nice, long, sustained drive that eats up a lot of clock. Any kind of points makes this a two-possession ball game, but now they're in a terrible position. So going out of their own end zone, the ball at the one-yard line. And to give this time to Blunt again, they'll get it out to about the four-yard line. And it'll be third down, and a lot. Cardinal again shuffling its interior lineman. And despite Oregon's ability to play fast and get people in and out with the no huddle, Stanford has got their substitutions and packages going pretty well. And that's snapped over the head of Masoli and out of the end zone of safety. 
So again, the mistakes just keep mounting for the Oregon Ducks, and that was clearly a weather-induced mistake. Well, there's no question about it. We talked about Fletcher and the ball slipping out of his hands and the shotgun that time out of their own end zone, Oregon. Max Unger just sends that ball flying. Masoli never has a chance at it, wisely lets it bounce out of the end zone instead of trying to pick it up and keeping it in play where Eric Lorg was bearing down and could have recovered it for a Stanford touchdown and tied this football game. Unger, all Pac-10, every watch list there is, Remington watch list for the best center in America with a costly mistake. Talk about centers, though, in this conference full of good centers. Stanford feels that Alex Fletcher, their own center, may not be the best. Oh, there's a lot of great centers in this conference. Though the Pac-10 has been generally perceived as down, these teams still understand each other and know each other and go after each other like there's no tomorrow. And there really is no tomorrow in a lot of these situations for some of these teams. Stanford battling to be bowl eligible in Oregon, trying to stay legitimate in the conference. There you see all these great centers, Odoud at USC, a young phenom, Juan Garcia at Washington, a real soldier playing through a tough year. Burley at Arizona has had a great year. Kenny Alfred at Washington State has always been very good. I mean, these guys never stop. So it is a 27-22 ball game. Clock is not any kind of a factor yet. Eight minutes, 41 seconds remaining. As creative, as fun as the Stanford offense was in the first half, only a field goal and that safety is all they've been able to muster the entire team as far as points go here in the second half. Now, interestingly, most teams choose to punt after a safety, but the Ducks will kick it from placement even simple. We'll kick it off the tee. Drives this pretty well. Owusu at about the 13-yard line. Right back up the gut and stopped. Good coverage that time on special teams by the Oregon Ducks. And there to make the stop was Marvin Johnson. So the Cardinal will start at the 35-yard line. Coming up next on our Saturday triple header, it'll be Kansas State. Trying to upset 14th ranked Missouri. Coverage beginning after our game, and of course, in high definition. I think they're getting a little weather in the heartlands also, so I don't know whether or not that'll be a weather game, but it could be. This is, I'll say. Pritchard, short drop, throws a slant, catch made by Ryan Whalen. And a gain of a bottom nine yards and this Oregon defense has been playing well in the second half just mentioned that Stanford's only been able to get a field goal against them that time nice play call getting the ball out dropping back on first down to Ryan Whalen and having a nice successful gain on first down is going to loosen up the Ducks a little bit because they're expecting run all the time from the Cardinal they still load the box do the Ducks Here with no chance whatsoever is Kimball. Now that's what happens when you run against the loaded box. You're not always going to have a great chance even to get back to the line of scrimmage. That time Cole Linehan and Nick Reed right on top of Kimball, and he did a good job of just securing the football. Absolutely no chance for any kind of positive yardage. And now it's third and about five. So we go from third and short to third and five. Stanford is a stubborn football team. They will run against the loaded box all the live long day. Yeah. That's the attitude that Jim Harbaugh has. Well, here they are again, stacking the box. And Pritchard gonna throw. Steps up, throws. That's a tough pass. It's intercepted. Flag is down. Bird with the interception to the 40 to the 35 and knocked out of bounds, but let's see about the flag, and this may be interference. They were early on Whalen. There's no question about it. An early hit. Whalen really getting up to get his hands on that ball. It didn't look like it was catchable. But I think they undercut him a little bit early. And that's the reason for the flag. Pass interference. Number 32 on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Crowd doesn't like it, but I think it was the right call. Here's a look. There's Whalen. Pretty nice route, but you see how fast Bird is. And 
Bird's athleticism and skill almost forsook him on that play because he was so quick getting back to the ball on the stop route by Whalen that he was right there when the ball went up in the air and he was on Whalen's legs. Not a lot of contact, but enough to draw the flag, obviously. So it gives Stanford another chance as Oregon uh, doing everything it can to keep Stanford in the ball game here. The ball at the 45-yard line of the Ducks. Just inside of seven minutes remaining. And this time Pritchard on the roll line. He's got the whole field. He's at the 40. He's at the 35-yard line. And he got a little bit tentative, I thought. He didn't know what he wanted to do. And eventually, T.J. Ward comes up and makes the tackle. Great play call on the bootleg. Just absolutely naked bootleg by Pritchard. Everybody sucks in because everybody's expecting run from the Stanford offense. Great play call, and Tavita Pritchard saw a wall of Oregon defenders. Doesn't necessarily have the speed or strength to pick a shoulder and try to run through everybody. Tries to stop and find a lane, but gets tackled in a gingerly fashion like you mentioned, Barry, but still a first down. Pickup of 10, the ball at the 35-yard line. They go out of the gun this time, and it's Lucas, the quarterback. And Lucas give it to Gerhardt. Gerhardt gets it down about the 31-yard line, a pickup of about four. Toby Gerhardt clearly playing hurt here. Yeah, and without that push in the legs, I mean, when you have a ham, it's one thing to have it, to be a big back and to have a hamstring injury is difficult because you depend so much. We talked about LeGarrette Blood and the push in his legs. Toby Gerhardt's very similar back where you depend so much on the ability of your leg muscles to push the pile and really fire those muscles. And when you can't do it, because it's so high up there, you can't push your legs, you're really hampered as a back. If it's an ankle and you're a big back, you're in a little bit better shape. Six carries, 10 yards for Gerhardt. It's been a tough day for him, but he was hurt early in the ball game. Here's Kimball, and Kimball's not going to get much. Maybe to the 29-yard line, a pickup of two. It's going to be third down and four. I'm sure Stanford's likely thinking about this as four down territory. Gerhardt's going back in the game. He's been used pretty much as a decoy in the second half, but a lot of props to Toby Gerhardt for sucking it up and getting out there playing with a pulled hammy, and right now he's going in for Kimball. He's a tough guy. Athletic family, of course, the all-time leading rusher in high school in the state of California. Over 9,000 yards. Woo. And again, two seconds remaining here on the play clock. And Stanford, I think, is going to have to call its last time out. That could really hurt. We'll come back. With Alex Lucas at quarterback here on third down and four for the Cardinal. Kimball is the tailback. And Lucas just follows Kimball into the hole and is not going to get there. Not going to get within two yards of the first down. I have to think Stanford will go here. Well, Lucas recognized that Kimball was really the right read to make. He should have given to Kimball. They like to run that read option with Lucas in the game. The giant Greek, Lucas, making the wrong read here. Should have just given to Kimball. Yeah. Sees that he should have given to Kimball and tries to follow Kimball into the hole. And by that time, the Oregon defense had recovered. I'm not sure if Kimball would have gotten it either. Well, here's the ball game right here. Fourth down and two. Stanford one of two on fourth down tries today. Pritchard back at quarterback. Kimball is the setback. And Pritchard going to throw over the middle. Great grab by Baldwin. First down, Cardinal at the 18-yard line. What a tough catch. Doug Baldwin, we had him circled right there in the slot. They had Whalen way out deep. And then Baldwin, who's made some very good catches. Only 16 receptions going into the game. Pritchard very comfortable again. You see, doesn't have a whole bunch of arm strength, but just fits it in there in a very tight spot. Well, Pritchard is a guy who doesn't dazzle you with statistics, but all you have to do is harken back to last year at USC to know that he can win football games. Here's Gerhardt with a gap, and Gerhardt will get it down close to the 10-yard line with a little help from behind from his offensive line. And a great job of pushing once again by Toby Gerhardt, and now the clock almost becoming a little bit of an enemy 
for the Oregon Ducks, assuming that Stanford can continue to roll and score a touchdown. There you see the big guy barreling down the field, and Patrick Chung, Pacinger, everybody on the Oregon team trying to stop Toby Gerhardt, but he got fresh legs because he hasn't had a lot of carries in this football game. Davina Pritchard has been very solid in this game, other than the three lapses, at least in the second half, of the three timeouts. He's had a hard time getting his guys lined up, and it's still happening. Again, he has to move Howell from the right to the left. Gerhardt still in the ball game. And this is Gearhart once more, and he's going to get the first down. Down to about the seven-yard line, and the clock continues to tick down. So it is a first down at the seventh. Well, Toby Gerhardt continuing to run the football, now coming out of the game for Anthony Kimball. But a very brave performance in the last couple carries. He's the son of a coach. His dad, Todd, is a high school coach at Norco. Brother Garth, offensive lineman at Arizona State. Triplet sisters play softball at Arizona State, but now Kimball's back in the game. Tenth play of this drive. It's consumed more than eight minutes. And there's a pitch to Kimball. Kimball cuts back. He is at the two, fumbles the ball. It goes into the end zone and is knocked out of bounds. And they're going to mark it at about the three-yard line, I believe. This is interesting. Harbaugh's all the way down there on the five-yard line. They're saying Kimball recovered it in the end zone before it bounced out of bounds. The Oregon Duck is even over there involved in the conversation. Yeah, that's right. Well, this was the situation. Remember, Oregon lost to Cal last year on a play very similar to this. Cameron Colvin in the same corner of the end zone, I believe. Kimball finding some room. Patrick Chung causing the fumble. Nice straight arm by Kimball. He had it. That's a touchdown. It looked like he recovered it and hit the pylon. Well, this There's is going to be interesting. Pops yeah. up into the air. I think Bear Kimball right. has possession. Foots in bounds That's on the touchdown. pylon. Touchdown. You, you are right. You are right, sir. The, and now they're calling touchdown. The ball was fumbled forward, was recovered out of bounds. The player crossed the sideline to inbounds. The ball is given to the fumbling team at the spot of the fumble, second down. I don't agree with that. Now they're saying he fumbled it forward. So here's another look at it. Timeout. The ruling on the field is under review. They are going to take a look at it here. Anthony Kimball well, following the ball. It would be a forward fumble, and you can't advance a forward fumble. The ruling on the field is reversed. The player recovered his fumble with a foot down inbounds and carried it across the goal line, touchdown. And that's the right call, we believe. Well, that's certainly what we saw up here, and wild celebration on the Stanford sideline. Boos rained down from the people left here in Autzen Stadium. It has stopped raining, but Oregon's gonna get a shot. To take the lead with a touchdown. Uh, now let's see what Stanford does here, they, they probably are going to go for two here. They have to to make it a three-point margin. won't matter. And don't be surprised if they just don't give it to Toby Gerhardt and expect him to push the pile into the end zone. He's in the game at tailback. So this to try to make it a three-point margin. So that rule is the only person that reco can recover a forward fumble is the fumbler, and that, in this case, was Kimball, and that's why the touchdown was allowed. Two-point try for Stanford, and Pritchard's gonna throw. Throws the back of the end zone incomplete, so it remains a one-point game, and a field goal will win it for Oregon. After the fake, absolutely had Toby Gerhardt wide open in the flat. You're gonna see Gerhardt, after the fake, come wide open. He doesn't go there, tries to get Whalen in the back of the end zone. Again, very difficult to test the speed of Jarris Bird, who's right on top of Whalen. That was never going to be a completion. Well, the last time the Stanford Cardinal came to Oregon and won a ball game, we know that guy, don't we? Ty Willingham, I know that guy too, out of Long Beach Poly, Chris Lewis. Yep. And there was the touchdown pass and the catch made by Johnson. Remember that guy? They ruined that Oregon season. That time you see the wild celebration on the Stanford sideline. Once again. <laughs> that was a big receiver, that Teo Johnson. Yeah, he was. Real basketball player at Stanford.
And I think what's going to be interesting, too, is will Mike Bellotti bring Roper off the bench because he's a guy who can throw the football? Well, I don't know how he could do that right now in good conscience, being that Masoli has taken him all the way through this football game. Granted, he's had some fumbles. The last turnover for the Ducks was, was not Masoli's fault. It was a bad snap by Unger, and Roper's been standing over there cold the entire game, and he hasn't taken off that red scout team jersey. Of course, he's wearing it because he's signaling in the plays to Masoli. So and he hasn't taken off the headset either. Right, that kind of <laughs> answers the question, doesn't it? Come out on the field with that thing, that microphone could hurt. Yeah, that's 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 a danger. Plus electrocution out here in the rain. You All of that. Don't want to mess around in that situation. I'm not sure they have an extension cord that's long enough. Be interesting to see here, Barry, if Masoli is going to have the ability to lead Oregon down the field for the field goal. They do have time, and they do have all their timeouts. Zachary's kick, an end-over-end kick, headed for Crenshaw. He loses it, still can't control it, finally does. Right now, let's go to our studio quickly for a game break with Mike Goldberg. So Zachary, who does not have a particularly strong leg to begin with, will try to drive this one. He hit it pretty good, actually. He's going to drive Crenshaw all the way back to five-yard line. That's the 10, the 15, tries to cut the outside, still on his feet. Now he goes head down to about the 25. And Oregon will start at its own 26-yard line. They gained 15 yards on that penalty. That's a lot of yards, especially when you're talking about a field goal situation. You see Roper whispering in the ear of the starting quarterback, Jeremiah Masoli. This is a defining moment in his very short duck career thus far. Masoli's only junior college transfer, so he's got a little experience, but has only been here since fall camp. So this is a relatively young quarterback who's almost like a freshman, definitely in this system he is. Goes with an empty backfield on first down. Now he steps up and throws underneath and one hops it. Intended for Terrence Scott, and that's going to get the crowd going here. You know, catches though for 45. Masoli this time straightens up, throws for Scott, and makes the catch. That might have been a bigger play where he not led so much. Well, that time Masoli gets it together and throws a nice ball. At least the completion. Masoli on a drag pattern for Scott this time. Scott has some room. He's across midfield, down to the 47-yard line. Don't go anywhere. Stanford trying to change personnel on the fly here. And a little confusion defensively for the Cardinal here as they try to get lined up right. Quick snap. Masoli rolls right. Moving pocket here. Now he throws, and a nice job to knock it away that time by Wapamo Asaisai. Comfortable standing back in the pocket and throwing. They still need about 15 yards. And here's a swing pass to Jeremiah Johnson. Steps out of a tackle and gets it inside the 35-yard line and out of bounds. With plenty of time left, only 139, but that's a world of time. Three timeouts remaining. Well, in a two-minute situation, I don't know who else I'd want in the world calling plays other than Chip Kelly with the ability of this Oregon offense to play fast whenever they want. It's really advantageous late in a game like this. And Stanford missing a lot of first tackles. They hand the Johnson this time. Gets it to about the 33. I mean, even from here, it's a makeable field goal. It's about 50 yards from here. Certainly would test Morgan Flint, but makeable. Second down, 120 remaining in the ball game. Oregon still has all three timeouts. This time, Masoli has all day and throws it away. Had Johnson in the game. Masoli back again. Now he steps up. He'll run. He's got room. He's the 25 to 20 to the 15 to the 10 yard line and out of bounds. Now they love him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> A 25 yard game. Now I'm sure the Ducks are thinking might not even have to try the field goal. Well, once again, great protection and nice big throwing lanes in that spread offense for Masoli to take off. Does a great job stepping out of tackles. Nobody really had a chance, especially with the strength of the legs that Jeremiah Masoli possesses, and that's a big play. First down at the eight-yard line. Give it to Johnson. Johnson to about the six. And down to one minute remaining in the ball game. And I doubt Oregon will call a timeout here. Stanford does not have a timeout, so they can do nothing about stopping the clock. Yeah. 
second down at the six yard line. This time it's Masoli on the keeper, and you can see Stanford trying to hawk the ball down to the three yard line, 35 seconds. Pretty good effort by Clinton Snyder that time, trying to get the ball away from Masoli, but a great job by Masoli. Strong hands and wrists and forearms like Popeye hanging on to that ball. And now Oregon's just got to survive to kick the field goal. It looks like they're going to try to run another play. That's interesting, isn't it? I mean, it's not much more than an extra point right now. I'm sure they'll just keep this in the middle of the field. And they give it to Blunt, and Blunt's going to take it in for a touchdown. And Oregon moves virtually the length of the field, and they did it very quickly. Barry, we talked about the Stanford defense because they don't play a lot of guys tiring in the fourth quarter, and Chip Kelly's pace and ability to call plays quickly, and Masoli's legs, and the running backs were just too much for Stanford to handle at the very end of the game. Well, Garrett Blunt, you can see that set up from a mile away, takes it in, and a nice collapsing of that Stanford defense by the left side of that Oregon offensive line. Just beautifully executed drive. Even though Masoli could barely throw the ball, he did it with his legs, and that's all they needed to do. Again, Chip Kelly told us, it's not a beauty contest. We're going to run the ball, and you have to give it up for Jeremiah Masoli with that big run to set up the touchdown, even though he's getting booed by his home fans, steps up and wins the game for the Oregon Ducks. That was an 11-play drive, and Oregon did not have to use a timeout. Well, coming up next, of course, we're going to the Big 12, Kansas State and Mizzou. Incidentally, Penn State was a loser today. Iowa beating them on a field goal at the final gun. Well, now Penn State finds themselves in a situation like USC. One loss in conference, the Big Ten considered weak, like the Pac-10 is considered weak, and that might keep them out of the championship. In fact, it probably will. And this, of course, falls into that category of very tough loss for the Stanford Cardinal. Well, they battled all the way through, but ultimately, just an ability to play too fast by this Oregon offense. They're Oregon, of course, two. yeah, well, they will go for two to try to make it a seven-point ball game. And Blunt's gonna get it in there for the two-point conversion. So it is a seven-point game with six seconds remaining to be played. Well, time now for our Pontiac game-changing performance, and of course it is for the Oregon Ducks. And the last play with LeGarrette Blunt taking it in for what should be the winning touchdown for being named today's Pontiac Pac-10 game-changing performance. Pontiac will award the University of Oregon $1,000 to its general scholarship fund. Pontiac, official performance machines of the Pac-10. Smiles everywhere on the Oregon sideline. Blunt will finish with 10 carries for 90 yards, including that two-point conversion and a couple of touchdowns. You see the disappointment from Jim Harbaugh Stanford played a tough game. They play hard, outmanned athletically by this Oregon team. They played a good game, but Oregon, you got to give them props. Just sticking to the run game, handling their business, and overcoming all those second-half turnovers, which would break most teams down. Autzen Stadium might have gotten to Stanford a little bit late, but you have to say that last drive, just a thing of beauty by Chip Kelly, the way he called it, they didn't even have to worry about Flint not being in this situation, kicking the ball after Matt Evenson was pulled last week. They didn't even have to worry about him kicking. All they had to do was run it in. And I would have to think they will not give Owusu a chance to return this football. They'll right? squib it. So six seconds remaining to be played. I remember an incident similar to this in a Stanford game. Really? It was against Cal. Kevin Mullen. Yep. And he does squib it down there, and Owusu gets a big hop at the 20-yard line, and there's that crossfield pass. And it's Baldwin trying to do something, and he's not going to be able to do anything. And this game is going to be over in Oregon with a tremendous last drive. You really have to give it up for the Ducks. And we've heard there's a flag on the field. I don't see one. Oh, I, I don't see Holding a flag right now. By the return team. Well, there you penalty are. Penalty is declined. I'll define the penalty, and Oregon will win this. And you really got to give it up for the Ducks here, Pete. Well, they really did come together at the end of the game and handled their business. A lot 
of turnovers in the second half. Mike Bellotti is not going to be pleased. Pretty sloppy game in some very sporadic, sloppy conditions, but they got it together. Stanford with a great drive, which we thought was going to win the game for them, but Oregon comes back with an even better drive and takes it, and once again, Jeremiah Masoli pulling it off with that great run, setting up LeGarrette Blunt. All right, let's go down to the field with Jim Watson. What a Mike, all things considered. Well, we apologize uh, for somebody probably pulled Jim Watson's microphone cord out in the celebration down on the field. So we apologize for not being able to get that interview with Mike Bellotti. Maybe we'll have an opportunity to talk to Wadi about what exactly Mike Bellotti had to say. I'm sure he has kind of mixed feelings about it right now. 35 to 28 ball game, 307 rushing yards for the Oregon Ducks. And that is what they do. And they did it extremely well on that final drive. So Stanford comes here, gives it a gallant effort in abysmal conditions. Oregon comes away with a drive of 75 yards at the end of the game to win it with six seconds remaining on the clock. Final score once more, the Oregon Ducks 35, the Stanford Cardinal 28.